to all our speakers connected online. The event is being transmitted live in English in all in the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance YouTube channel and in Portuguese in the Brazilian Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation YouTube channel. We would like to ask all speakers to leave your cameras on in your respective sessions and really any time uh, in, during the event because we are streaming online, but only open your microphone when you are going to speak. At the end of each, each session, we would like to ask all to leave your cameras on in order to take a picture all together. This will be a request that I will make uh, quite often today. We would also like all speakers to keep your contributions short and direct as possible so we can be on track with today's agenda. Well, to welcome you to this event, we will hear welcome speeches from the co-hosts and co-organizers of the event. So I would like to call the National Secretary for Research and Scientific Training of the Brazilian Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, Mr. Marcelo Morales. Secretary, the floor is yours. Good morning uh, here in Brazil. Thank you, Sofia, for the introduction and welcome uh, to the scientific event uh, of the Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance Forum in Brazil. After two very busy days at workshops, uh, today it is time for being together at uh, this high level scientific day. This event is preparatory to the high level ministerial event in Washington, D.C., implemented in all Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Framework. Uh, the 2022 forum is co-hosted by USA and Brazil. I take the opportunity uh, to thank the dedication, effort, and friendship of the United States team and working uh, with uh, the team uh, here in Brazil in the preparation for the event in Brasilia and Washington, D.C. It's a, a testament of our shared vision, uh, the strong linkage of our peoples, and most importantly, uh, our history of collaboration in science and the ocean science. The scientific event is organized by the Brazilian partners involved as uh, I say here, MCTI, the Minister of Science, Technology, Innovation, CNPQ, the National Council for Research in Brazil, and CONFAP, the state, uh, the Confederation of State Foundations uh, in Brazil. Together with the European Commission, uh, the co-chairs of the Belém and uh, Galway Statement, and the institutional partners uh, of the Alliance, and with the support of Anchor C. SI uh, project. This multi-institutional collaborative effort is possible through uh, the ages of the Belém and Galway statements. And uh, to acknowledge that, I thank the forum steering committee uh, with part participants from all over uh, the, Atlantic, the Atlantic for their uh, passionate dedication and hard work. We now look forward to the Atlantic uh, Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Declaration uh, to be signed during the high level ministerial event in Washington, DC. It ties together the South and North Atlantic, including Galway and Belay uh, partners and beyond. This is itself a major accomplishment and the collaboration and activities developed under the new declaration shall be built upon uh, the lesson learned in Belém and Galway, improving its governance and participation mechanisms. Uh, this brings us back to the last couple of days and our workshop was designed to support a well-structured dialogue among the scientific community, ongoing actions, and build the necessary interface, target sustainability uh, perspectives, and include the involvement 
of decision makers. All this uh, with the aim of looking forward in future perspectives in paving the way for endorsement at the event in Washington, DC. We have had a, a overwhelming re, uh, registration number uh, reaching almost 500 registered. I am looking forward uh, to looking into the participation numbers. Uh, our team had uh, to adapt uh, to accommodate an, an interest that was in the upper uh, bracket of our expectation. And I think, I think the engagement and dedication of the scientific community in embracing a uh, workshop format that is novel and sometimes challenging. We strongly believe that the effort will pay off. So at the next session today, we will listen uh, to find this findings from scientific workshops from their participants. And after that, uh, we will have uh, our ambassador and cross-generational talks with uh, youth and uh, more experienced professionals from uh, across the Atlantic. Then after the, the short break, I will uh, be proud to share a session to celebrate the achievements of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. Also, uh, specifically happy with the presence uh, of the arriving partners of the new declaration, Argentina, Cape Verde, and Morocco. Finally, our minister and institutional partners will present, uh, pr present their key messages at the closing sessions. And now we will watch recorded welcome remarks from our hosting partners. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm hearing some noise. Okay. Uh, so now, as said, we will hear three recorded welcome messages from the speakers that couldn't be presented today with us. So from the United States, uh, we will hear the Under Secretary of Commerce for Oceans and Atmosphere and National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administrator, Mr. Richard Spinrat. From the President of the Brazilian National, uh, we will also hear a speech from the President of the Brazilian National Council for Scientific and Technological Development, Mr. Evaldo Vilela, and um, lastly, uh, a speech from the President of the Brazilian National Council of State Funding Agencies, Mr. Odir de Lagostin. Can we uh, put the videos on? Yes, we are working on that. Thank you. Good morning and good afternoon to our international guests. Welcome to this All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Scientific Forum. On behalf of the United States of America, the Department of Commerce, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, I would like to thank our Brazilian colleagues for hosting the 2022 All Atlantic Scientific Session. We are grateful to the ministries involved as well as the Brazilian National Council for the State Funding Agencies and the National Council for Scientific and Technological Development for their hard work on the scientific event. The United States believes that cooperation throughout the Atlantic Ocean is vital to the health of our oceans, people, and economy. The scientific session is an opportunity for us to come together as a community, celebrate successes, and identify new ways to cooperate. We are pleased to co-host this historic forum with Brazil a long-time partner in the Atlantic Ocean. NOAA has a rich history of collaboration with Brazil on everything from Earth observations to responding to oil spills to monitoring the variability of ocean dynamics and thermal structure in the South Atlantic. This is the first time that an All-Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance Forum 
has ever been co-hosted. And we're very pleased to share this honor with our friends and colleagues in Brazil. We believe this reflects the spirit of cooperation that the All Atlantic Alliance embodies. Since 2013, the United States has worked closely with Canada and the European Union as part of the Galway Statement on Atlantic Ocean Cooperation to leverage Atlantic research and innovation opportunities in the North Atlantic Ocean. The Galway and Bolem initiatives have achieved impressive results in the areas of seabed mapping, ocean literacy, marine microbiology, and ocean observation. This work is truly inspiring. And by joining efforts through the All Atlantic Forum, the whole will be even greater than the sum of its parts. The United States looks forward to working with all of you to identify even more ways we can grow North and South Atlantic cooperation. Over the course of the scientific session, scientists from around the Atlantic shared how they are advancing ocean research and climate mitigation, ecosystem resilience, and tackling marine pollution. These are all critical aspects for how we intend to build out a climate ready nation by 2030 in the United States. However, we cannot be a climate ready nation unless we have a climate ready world. After all, we are one global ocean community. Protecting the world's ocean while mitigating, adapting to, and building resilience against climate change necessitates our collective effort. We also heard about the importance of ocean literacy and how experts are promoting environmental stewardship and a sustainable economy, as well as the knowledge-based new blue economy. This work is particularly pressing as the ocean is a vital source of emerging capabilities for acquiring data and developing information to support decision-making and climate adaptation strategies, and also supports building new ocean constituencies and innovative economies. We've also learned about efforts to support sustainable fisheries and aquaculture, and to further ocean observation, exploration, and seabed mapping. Throughout the scientific sessions, we've been joined by representatives from the All-Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassadors Program, who are providing valuable insights on the significance of Atlantic cooperation for early career professionals and future generations. As a continuation of the 2022 forum, the outcomes of this scientific session will be presented at a ministerial session in Washington, DC this July. The ministerial session will highlight the work of the all Atlantic community and outline the forward-looking developments the Alliance is undertaking. The highlight of the ministerial session will be the signing of the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Declaration. The declaration outlines the vision of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance and will build upon collaboration between existing ocean research and innovation initiatives in the Atlantic Ocean. Co-planning and co-designing of research and innovation projects will be essential to ensuring collaborative partnerships throughout the Atlantic, as well as meaningful project outcomes. It is important to recognize the diversity of contributions that partners throughout the Atlantic bring to this Ocean Research Alliance and to welcome additional perspectives to the table. We are proud of the work that has been achieved so far through the anchor joint pilot actions, ongoing Galway working groups, Atlantic pledges, and associated initiatives. We look forward to continuing to leverage opportunities and to collaborate on new initiatives throughout the Atlantic Ocean. Thank you for your participation and contributions to this All Atlantic Scientific Session, and I hope to see you in Washington, D.C. in July. Good morning and good afternoon to all the participants of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance Forum 2022 scientific event in Brazil. I want to thank you all for your presence and especially thank our colleagues from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of the United States of America, who are co-hosting this important forum together with Brazil. I also wish to give my special thanks to the European Commission for the cooperation and support in this endeavor, so as to our all Atlantic partners from South Africa, 
Canada, Argentina, Cape Verde, Morocco here with us today. The Brazilian National Council for Scientific and Technological Development, CNPq, is deeply engaged in the All Atlantic Ocean Strategic Partnership, together with our national partners, the Brazilian Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, MCTI, and the Brazilian National Council of State Funded Agencies, CONFAP. And we are glad and honored to be contributing together to invest in ocean science and innovation. Our joint efforts in gathering our scientific communities and institutional partners testifies our mutual commitment in this alliance. And we are glad to open today the 2022 All Atlantic Forum here in Brazil and preparatory to the ministerial event in Washington. Confident that this will be relevant milestones which can trace and orient our future cooperation pathways, reinforce all that has been built up to now. We have collaboratively and intensively worked together in the past years, believing in the use to collectively tackle emergency challenges that our oceans speak out for. We believe that we need to keep the momentum and offer new opportunities to our communities, fostering their involvement in science and innovation, seeking for solutions and paving for new winds of change. Invest in science, research and innovation and in policy dialogue and scientific diplomacy is key to address the environmental, economic and social demands we all face. And we trust that international cooperation and continuous dialogue are crucial to address ch challenges and to find solutions in a unified manner. The All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance joins us in the tackling together many spears which affect humanity, including management of water resources, energy, and food security. Fishing and aquaculture, climate change, and extreme events, sustainable use of natural resource and biodiversity, combined with the development of innovative technologies and social innovation to seek the solutions. Join forces means also sharing knowledge, aligned policies, sharing research infrastructure and data, capitalizing technologies improving capacities in the common scope of helping to overcome social and regional inequalities and technological and productive inclusion. We are confident that international cooperation is the way forward and science is our major strength, coupled with our societies. Our joint efforts on ocean scientific research is crucial in the purpose of enabling scientifically anchored decision making, including our societies in this protest and based on our common and shared values. This is why we truly welcome this forum and why we are keen to keep our actions close to what science and society demands for. Thank you very much. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance Forum 2022, an event co-hosted by the United States of America and Brazil. I would like to thank the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of the United States, as well as our national partners, the Brazilian Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, MCTI, 
and the National Council for Scientific and Technological Development, CNPQ, for all the contribution in the organization of this forum. I would also like to thank our all Atlantic partners from South Africa, Canada, Argentina, Cape Verde, Morocco, and especially the European Commission for all the support and the partnership we have been constructing in the past years now amplified in this strategic, strategic cooperation. We are glad to see today that many efforts made to strengthen our research communities is concretely advancing. We consider this forum a unique opportunity to step forward and we are honored to be facilitating this process. The challenges we face are common to all of us and we believe that investing in science and innovation in all levels is fundamental to reach our common objectives. The ocean plays a vital role in the global climate system and biosphere, providing humanity with fundamental resources, including water, food, energy, and raw materials. A sustainable use of the ocean resources is only possible if we understand this unique ecosystem. In this regard, we believe that fostering scientific and institutional dialogues and investing in science is key to establish national and international resilient strategies to face environmental and societal changes. Looking forward to our ministerial forum in Washington, I would like to highlight our satisfaction in gathering our all Atlantic Ocean research and innovation communities so as our key institutional partners from south to north and from coast to coast of the Atlantic Ocean. And I wish that our joint endeavor can build upon what we have already achieved and go much further. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all these very inspiring uh, welcoming messages. And now we are moving to uh, the second session of today's event. And I kindly ask you to turn on your cameras for a picture. As I said, we will take a lot of pictures uh, during the event today. So following these, these messages, it's now time uh, to hear the outcomes and the priorities of the online scientific workshop that took place in the last two days. So I, I will now share my screen and I hope you all see it. And um you can see here that this uh, this workshop has been organized in uh key priorities and there were seven rooms dedicated to these priorities that are here on the screen so ocean climate ecosystems pollution aquaculture and fisheries observing sustainable and inclusive ocean economy and uh, literacy then other session focus on the cross cutting aspect uh, we can see these... your screen sorry we cannot see your know. screen you see it now, you see it now? no not yet mm. okay mm. okay my mistake my mistake I think now I can see. Now you can see. It. Yes. Oh, excellent. So sorry, and I will uh, speak again from the beginning. Uh, so I hope you can see it now. So I was saying that the, the works of the workshop was divided in seven sessions. Uh, some of these sessions were uh, uh, um, tackling key priorities that uh, the Alliance consider uh, relevant. So the first one is ocean climate, ecosystems, pollution, aquaculture and fisheries, observing uh, the ocean, of course, uh, sustainable and inclusive ocean economy and literacy. And in addition to these uh, key priorities, there were also some sessions dedicated to cross-cutting aspects, data, engage, infrastructures, and capacity. So here we have 11 uh, sessions that took place. And there was, in fact, another session that was not uh, um, uh, thought. Senorita Sofia. 
está no modo de controle a sua apresentação. Uh, here I don't see that. But can you see that? Can you see like it, like that? Yes, it's okay. It's okay. Go ahead, please. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, uh, there was uh, another session that was added to this workshop, uh, and this session was added because there was uh, a strong engagement from the Brazilian partners uh, in the event. So another session was uh, uh, created with the aim to have an overview on view from Brazil. Uh, of the All Atlantic Ocean Research uh, Corporation. And this session discussed all the topics that you saw here uh, before. So the key priorities and the cross-cutting issues. So we will hear today uh, uh, the outcomes of these 12 workshops that took place. And now I would like to call uh, uh, the scientific rapporteurs of each of the workshops for a three minutes presentations. Please be as brief as you can. And for the session on ocean climate, I would like to call Ms. Nicole Duplessis from the South African Environmental Observation Network of the National Research Foundation. Thank you, Sophia, for that introduction. Yes, uh, as, as indicated, um, I was part of the group on the ocean climate priority area. Um, and these were really engaging sessions um, and really interesting to note some of the synergies once the four groups on data, infrastructure, capacity and engagement came together. Um, and we managed to advise, identify and summarize three main actions uh, that we think are needed for increasing our understanding of the relationship between the ocean and climate and to develop science-based solutions for mitigating and adapting to the really high stakes consequences of climate change. So acknowledging and appreciating the efforts and developments that have already been made through the Atlantic program, there's a need to build on and improve the all Atlantic ocean Observ observing network, including engaging other relevant scientific efforts across all fields of research. And we need to build the observation capacity today to understand the climate phenomena and prepare for the future societal and environmental needs. There's also a need for a sustainable funding me mechanism or model to develop to be developed that would support ocean climate science in a holistic manner. So the funding for science facilities, equipment, data storage and personnel from collection to dissemination of information and the messaging that we need around climate change. And the allocation of funding should also reflect the importance of the development of personnel across the science value chain. And finally, we need inclusive science following the leave no one behind approach. International collaboration as promoted and facilitated through the All Atlantic program plays a key role in the promotion of open open ocean science for the benefit of society. I would also just like to take this opportunity to thank Renzo, Monica and the other facilitators for the really well run and managed sessions, as well as all the session participants for really informative and engaging two days. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. So for the session on ecosystems, I'd like to call Mrs. Mary Gazala from the Australia Griffith Oceanographic Institute of the University of São Paulo. Uh, thanks, Sophia, and um, good morning, good afternoon, uh, dear Secretary, Ministry representatives. Mary, uh, yeah. your, your slide is not sharing well. We can see your screen, yeah. but uh, everything that is in your screen. Okay. Is it okay now? Yes, you just need to take, uh, take out from the front uh, a window that is open. Oh, oh perfect. perfect. Many oh. windows, sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, thanks, Sophia and uh, dear um, 
ministry secretary representatives and delegates it's a i'm, I'm pleased to share the um, uh, findings of the scientific uh, workshop on ecosystems so our oceans transports good services heat and life beyond water fisheries resources their larvae but also pollutants and litter that together with climate change threaten marine biodiversity and people that relies on it. Mapping marine ecosystems is essential to address both the problems and solutions, but scientific data and infrastructure need permanent updates. Review, revisit past surveys, standardized approaches and multidisciplinary monitoring and evaluation. And biodiversity is essential to the health of our oceans and ours. So during the last two days, we had this uh, very fruitful discussion with um, five session organizers from Brazil covering data infrastructure engagement capacity. We had two inspirational experts from Italy and Canada of 34 participants. This is why I can't include all the names here. Um, but we could identify and discuss gaps, integration, data sharing models, sensors and sampling platforms, novel networks needs and exchange needs and future priorities. Uh, as key recommendations, uh, the team discussed it and agreed that further investment on both monitoring and ecosystem-based management should be made while the blue economy development increases pressures on ecosystems. The science policy interface needs further mechanisms to advance. An Atlantic advisory board to inform and share successful experiences and common issues across the region would help to reach common goals. Create and promote permanent exchange programs with long-term mobility opportunities that enables longer and deep understanding of different disciplines. For example, a marine Erasmus to early career research could be a good idea. Uh, define strategies and specific research funding for marine science research to reach people who are currently making decisions on policies. The group discussed uh, the ecosystem data needs like integrative planning of data collection over time and space, which will ma maximize return on investments and need to improve synergies among Atlantic projects and more country level dialogue among these projects. Also infrastructure for data collection is needed in several Atlantic regions. Uh, also regarding capacity building and the funding, the group suggests fund common research programs, including natural and social science disciplines. Also a well-planned gap analysis on capacity building topics seems to still be missing and would help this community. And also offering legal and diplomacy courses to understand local policies and improve exchange strategies on ecosystem research. Um, also engage different capacity building programs through an Atlantic network of, of programs. As future priorities, the group suggested that new generation of stakeholders deserves novel thinking, resources and tools. Also that indigenous traditional and local knowledge are vital for monitoring, protecting and restoring and require further engagement and inclusion. Synergistic articulation among current initiatives and with other fora will be key to avoid the duplication of efforts. Other relevant messages were gender equality and inclusion that should be promoted in all joint actions. And that fisheries management needs ecosystem based approaches and implementation in several regions where investments should still be made. The North depends on the South and this versa. So we are all together in this. Thanks very much to the organizers and for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mary, uh, for these inputs. Uh, and now I would like to ask uh, all the remaining uh, speakers 
uh, to be very brief. Otherwise, we will not have uh, uh, time to hear uh, everyone. So now for the session on pollution, I would like to call Mrs. Maria Vernet from the United States of America National Science Foundation. Maria. Thank you. Is it working? Yes, it is. Yes. Thank you. So, um, uh, yeah, my name is Maria Bernay. Thank you for the introduction. Um, we had a wonderful day and a half of discussions. Very difficult to summarize in one slide, but I tried to uh, be fair. But anyone interested in the topic definitely needs to look at all the, the wonderful uh, results coming from the discussion. Um, we had, like, like it was introduced, four areas of discussion, data, capacity, infrastructure, and engage. And the main message from the data is to provide open and coastal ocean data and information visible and accessible to all. Um, the way to achieve this goal is to build an all-Atlantic data community um, to be inclusive, from early career to senior, from regional to intercontinental databases to projects to initiatives. So have data from everyone, create a data space based on fair and care principles. These are principles that are international and that uh, provide high quality data to everyone interested. The, the additional discussion that we had was that not only data needs to be uh, <clears throat> available to everyone, but we also need to work on uh, data analyses and, and portals so that everyone that is not an expert on data can still do their science or policy. In the area of capacity, it was highlighted that <clears throat> we needed uh, <clears throat> to build capacity based on local, regional, and basin-wide identified needs and based on also on the available education. <clears throat> One of the helpful things about pollution is that <clears throat> Everyone it lives with it in their own homes. So everyone can relate to it and everyone can do something about it. So we need to meet everyone in the place in which they are, at the level that they are, and be inclusive to <clears throat> provide the, the, the education and the training needed to collect the data following the fair and care principles. With respect to infrastructure, it was, um, it was discussed that we needed to build an ocean pollution infrastructure that would in time develop new tools, new tools and, to, and also detect emerging pollutants. For now, we need to um, <clears throat> base our infrastructure on current tools, both to monitor and to support science. And finally, for the engage um, topic, we thought that we needed to reach all levels of the society based on a network that would provide changes in attitudes towards pollution. I think the, the education and the outreach here is very important and uh, it, it should be based on ocean literacy principles. What we all shared were several aspects that are important that I would like to highlight. First, the importance of networking and to be inclusive. Everyone that wants to be included needs to be included to wherever area capacity and level they are right now. Training is important in all areas and we need to relate everything in pollution to boosting the ocean economy. And finally, one idea was that not only we need to be inclusive of everyone, especially the youth, who are going to be living with the ocean for the next few decades, but also to learn from them. For example, they are experts on communication. <clears throat> so thank you very much. And it's been a pleasure and I'm, I'm out of here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. And now for the session on aquaculture, I'd like to call Mrs. Elisa Havagnan from the, the Norwegian Research Center. Elisa. Thank you, Sophia. <clears throat> I will uh, go without uh, the uh, visual uh, aid. 
to save time. Uh, so I, I'm Elise Ravagnan from uh, Norway, uh, the Norwegian Research Center, and uh, I'm really very proud to present to you the results and on some of the results of the discussion, the workshop on aquaculture and fisheries. Uh, I would like to thank you all the group and the facilitator because it's been a really very, uh, a lot of enthusiasm and commitment. Uh, we have highlighted the three major pillars that summarize the, the several key points emerged in our discussion. Uh, sustainable aquaculture and fishery, especially uh, small scale fishery, have the responsibility to provide the nutrition, sustainable food from the ocean now and in the years to come. So the three points, the, the three pillars is share, engage and develop capacity. And it's really very interesting to see that the, also the speaker before me, even if topics were different, we are ending up in the same, uh, in a way, in the same direction. And this is really very, uh, very interesting and very hopeful for the future. Sharing, the data is essential to develop sustainable and aquaculture uh, and fishery practices is, um, there is the need for a continuous uh, and consistent collection of data, not only from catch and production, but also from stressors such like, such like the effect of climate change, as we said before, and the pollutants, as just we saw now. Sharing those data, best practice, uh, and uh, also infrastructure is fundamental for the implementation of uh, sustainable practices. And uh, of course, there is not a solution that fits all. We have to take uh, into account the regional differences and the regional adaptability, but still the data and knowledge uh, has, to be, has to be there. And also should be available in a user-friendly and accessible platform at various degrees of digitalization, not only for the scientific community, but for all the stakeholders. The second pillar is the engage. Engage is to develop successful and co-owned solution is essential to co-create with, uh, with a wide range of stakeholders. The engagement of multi-sectoral stakeholders uh, from fellow researcher to industry, policymaker, NGOs, local community with their invaluable local knowledge that uh, sometimes is not valued enough and society large from different generation, but also the consumers that are the ones that are deciding uh, the market for the product from the sea. All of them, most uh, this engagement must happen during the whole process from the definition of the question to the solution outline. It is essential to raise awareness and increase the knowledge of the sustainability of some of the aquaculture and small scale fishery practices, attract young, but not only, talents uh, in this field and uh, early and framed uh, early on to frame the needs for the policy implementation and governance at several level from local to international and then of course develop its capacity uh, the education is a key activity education courses uh, should address the multidisciplinary knowledge necessary to achieve sustainable solutions however we shouldn't think only uh, focusing only on the academic sector but courses at different level, length, and technical specificity should be developed, matched with internship and exchange around the, along the Atlantic Ocean to promote employment, especially for youths and communities where high unemployment rate. So the whole Atlantic perspective give a unique dim dimension to develop those pillars. It is important to continue the work that the transatlantic projects and initiative are doing right now and building on the collaboration they are constantly developing. And uh, there is much more I could say, but I stop here since the time is, uh, is short and uh, looking forward to see you all and to um, produce our report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elisa. Now for the session of serving, I would like to call Mrs. And Christine Zinken from the United States of America National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. And thank you so much, and welcome everyone, and welcome everyone online as well who is uh, signing into the YouTube channel. Um, first, I wanted to thank everyone who attended the multi hour session and helped really brainstorm uh, these recommendations, and I will try to be very brief. Um, so I'm repertoring for the observing piece, which is a central part of making all of these uh, endeavors even possible. Without observations, we won't be able to have any uh, monitoring and predictions and tools um, to keep us all informed. Um, so I wanted to quickly highlight the three main discussions that we had. Um, the first one was on data 
uh, reiterating some what the other groups have already highlighted, we need universal and follow universal fair principles to make data available to everyone and need to follow care and trust principles and include traditional indigenous knowledge. Um, we need to have Brazilian funding for data management to make sure that we can follow these principles and make sure that we have all the information that is being uh, observed in the oceans and can have the best and most educated models and predictions and tools to inform society and different stakeholders. Um, another suggestion was that we need a minimum set of uh, standards, which I think feeds partially into the, the FAIR principles as well. Um, for infrastructure, we really need to ensure that we have a balanced research activities and infrastructure, not just in the, in the north and the south, but that we work together, that we have access to research vessels and coordinate these activities, that we develop and share training programs and empower young uh, researchers to be involved in these and educate them to push our vision forward so it will be continued in a, success, a successful way. Um, and we need to have the cross-disciplinary infrastructure. Um, for capacity and engagement, we was highlighted that we need flexible funding to not only allow researchers and the, you know, the typical scientists that are part of these, uh, these endeavors to be involved, but that we can reimburse and, and, and support, for example, indigenous uh, knowledge holders who are coming to events to share their knowledge and help with these endeavors. Um, we need to facilitate integration and communication across groups in the Atlantic and co-design processes to improve the engagement of stakeholders and make sure that what we're producing in terms of tools uh, and knowledge um, that, that we're being responsive to the needs of different stakeholders and citizens to make sure that their questions are answered. And I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Christine. So now for the session, Ocean Economy, I would like to call Mr. Ian Martinson from the European Commission to Joint Research Center. Ian? Yeah. Hi there. Thank you, Sophia. Good morning and good afternoon to all of you. I was very privileged being part of a quite vivid group. I would particularly like to thank um, Ivan Machado Martins, Isabella Bourdon, and Tawan Santos, who were great facilitators keeping us on track, which was not an easy task. We were commonly reflecting on um, how to promote a circular, sustainable, and inclusive ocean economy. Or actually, as uh, Richard Spinrad just stated uh, very fittingly, the new knowledge-based blue economy. Basically, we were thinking about how to make the best of ocean resources for our society while preserving the full treasure of opportunities, also for future generations, of course, and protecting the still vastly unknown and, as we know, very fragile marine environment. The main points we would like to highlight is that we actually observe uh, that moving towards a truly sustainable and inclusive ocean economy is of increasing relevance, and it requires a solid, holistic, and coherent governance approach, which is also based on scientific evidence. We are convinced that ocean governance underpinning a truly sustainable and inclusive ocean economy is possible, and it should be promoted. We know already that countries and regions have established scientific evidence-based blue economy strategies, and these can actually serve as paradigms to those areas of the world that, are, that have not yet embarked on such an approach. We do observe that data and scientific information that can support relevant policy frameworks is available and it should be tapped into. However, we also see that a considerable fraction of relevant data and information cannot be easily accessed by stakeholders, be it scientists, decision makers, or citizens. We perceive that minorities of our societies tend to be underrepresented in the discussion on all Atlantic Ocean economy, and this needs to be addressed. Obviously, and this was also already referred to before, climate change constitutes a major challenge to humanity, and an evidence-based ocean economy is an important, albeit often underrated, ingredient to climate change mitigation and adaptation. We are convinced that the development of approaches sustaining a truly circular ocean economy are imperative. And we suggest that the concept of looking at oceans and coastal areas as a realm that can sustain economic growth and can provide for energy and food security should be enhanced but must be accompanied by a solid and coherent governance framework that ensures true sustainability. In this context, while we see that measuring the relevance of a sustainable ocean economy in terms of established economic indicators, a typical example is cross-domestic product, is important and remains challenging, 
but we need to move beyond and better integrate social and environmental aspects. And here we would like to see that initiatives such as the Global Ocean Accounts Partnership will be integrated in a truly all-Atlantic collaborative ambition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ian. And now for the last session on the key priorities, I would like to call Mrs. Vanessa Batista from CNCV in Portugal, and she will uh, show, uh, show us the outcomes from the literacy session. Vanessa? Hi, thank you, Sophia. Thank you for all. Um, uh, good afternoon uh, or good morning. I don't know. Uh, regarding the ocean literacy session, uh, we counted with the 25 participants in the very and very committed facilitators in a constructive discussion, which led us to the identification of 39 key messages on the four cross country topics identified. Um, the main outcomes refers to the need to collaborate with local people and stakeholders, valuing their traditional knowledge, their language, and guarantee that everyone in the Atlantic Basin is, is included by listening to youth, children, and elders, and integrated policymakers into the discussion. Funding should be used for meaningful and inclusive actions, and freedom to use these resources should be given according to local realities and demands. We should strengthen the cooperation with scientific communities from other priority areas and within the working groups of the Alliance, as ocean literacy should not be seen as a social science topic, rather as a holistic issue that all the oceanic communities should look at and embrace. We should ensure access to key data to develop products and efforts that engage different public audience, making the key scientific findings, findings easily known and understood. The social data should be valued and should be used in conjunction with technical data. The, Atlant the Atlantic realities with less access to the internet and technology tools should be considered when talking about data. We should foster citizen science and share good practice of collecting data. The infrastructures must be sought as social infrastructures, allowing the low-income countries and vulnerable communities to have access to ocean science. Develop a sharing platform for, platform for equipment that are not in use or newly acquired technology and involve scientists and industry to develop a low-cost equipment for research and education is needed to promote social innovation and partnership. We have to create programs and workshops to improve ocean science communication and storytelling for ocean professionals. Interdisciplinarity capacity building among ocean science and social science, laws, arts, and other knowledge sectors should be fostered, as well as capacity building for decision makers and teachers, especially those in inland areas. Despite ocean literacy should be taken as a cross-cutting issue and be represented in the other working groups, it is very important that it continues to be an independent working group in order it can be reflective and active. And this was the main results of this uh, very good discussion in this one day and a half. Thank you very much, Vanessa. And now we will move on to the sessions, on to the cross-cutting sessions, and we will start with a session on data. And I would like to call Mrs. Nikki Funk from the South African Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Nikki. Thank you, Sophia. Um, good day, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here and to give you a short overview of the discussions that took place yesterday in the session on data. So during yesterday's session, the participants were asked to craft 10 key messages that promote the cross-cutting aspects of data in support of the future of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. These messages are still undergoing final revisions, so I'm not going to read them to you now, but in the meantime, I want to highlight three main points of discussion from yesterday's data session, which I thought were interesting. Firstly, we talked about the complexity of the data management landscape. There are overwhelming volumes of data uh, these days that data managers and data stewards have to deal with. The phrase that was used is that it's a sea of data. And there are also ever evolving expectations of what that data is supposed to achieve. So how do we turn the so-called sea of data into something useful? 
While there is no shortage of tools and standards to do so, the challenge is to make this a sustainable process. So there's a need to invest in capacity building and sustained funding and operations. Secondly, we could discuss the divide that exists between data producers and data users. To bridge this gap is something that goes beyond data sharing. Capacity and skills are needed to translate data into products that are usable and useful, not only to policymakers, but to a whole range of end users. Now, we already have organizations and individuals working within this gap or divide, but more support is required to resource them and to recognize their importance and their valuable efforts to date and also going forward. And then thirdly, and going beyond points one and two, we talked about the importance of an all Atlantic data space. Such a space requires us to focus on common standards for data and information sharing using the fair and care principles, studying and learning from best practices, placing greater emphasis on the importance of the data component of research projects, capacity development and sustained funding. But most importantly, we need to ensure that a common language is spoken, not only amongst researchers themselves, but also between researchers or data producers and their end users. And this will help to ensure that data becomes available and useful to all potential users in the Atlantic, across and between different countries, as well as different sectors of society. And that's my feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nikki. And uh, now for the session on infrastructures, I'd like to call Mrs. Fumulani. Fumulani, I have some, some difficulties in saying your, your last name, so I will give a try. Hamukawato from the South African Department of Science and Technology. Apologize if I, uh, I did any mistake with your surname, Fumulani. Please go ahead. No, you are forgiven, Sophia. Thank you. It's Fumulani Ramukwato. Okay, good morning and good afternoon to all the participants. From the infrastructure workshop group, I will only summarize four key messages that we discussed yesterday. And in number one, I will discuss the funding, wherein there's a need to secure a sustainable infrastructure funding for all the seven priority areas across the all Atlantic countries from public and private partnerships. And then this can only be achieved through creating an all Atlantic grant fund and then the grant fund will be used to train personnel for data collection and instrument training. And then the second one, we discuss the equipment and platform, wherein there's a need to improve the spatial coverage of equipment or platform. And this can only be achieved through strategic and inclusive process. The process will be able to enable inclusive sharing of sampling platforms such as research vessels, sensors, and satellite. The third one is collaboration, wherein there's a need to encourage international collaboration so that we can achieve our scientific goals and solve today's grand challenges. It will be easier for us to organize or to have joint field work when we do collaboration. The fourth one is communication, wherein there's a need to communicate and promote the value of benefit of infrastructure development in supporting transdisciplinary programs that will benefit the society to understand ocean literacy and citizen science across the All Atlantic. So for the future of priorities, it was recommended that the All Atlantic Alliance need to improve, commit and invest in the infrastructure to support our sustainable future. And also recommend that we should increase the use of robots and remotely operated vehicles to collect ocean data. And then with all the new technologies that are developing for the future and new our new generation, there's a need to have new regulations that will require monitoring purposes and compliance. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank all the participants and experts for the valuable discussion we had in the infrastructure workshop group. Thank you very much for Mulani. Now for the session on Engage, I would like to call Mr. Jose Mulbert from the Institute of Oceanographic from the Federal University of Rio Grande. Jose. Good morning, all. Uh, is it working? Yeah, good. Yes, good. Okay. So good morning and good afternoon to all of you. Uh, before I start report, reporting on the engagement group, 
I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and the Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be here today. I'm very happy to report to you on the very excited and dynamic discussions of the engagement group. For the sake of brevity, I will uh, keep to the three main messages on future priorities. However, I do encourage you to read the reports that will come out of this meeting. With, uh, we will highlight 10 other very important issues so that we can have a very strong engagement in the all Atlantic uh, research community uh, area. So first, we think it's very important to promote a government structure for the Atlantic community that fosters equitable participation of all member states and integrates ocean literacy, literacy expertise into the other scientific priorities of the community. We also think that it's very important to ensure equitable participation, inclusiveness, and collaboration as a means to produce science, technology, information, and knowledge that responds to societal challenges and values. Furthermore, this can all be only be achieved if we have sustained and flexible funding for engagement of activities and processes according to local realities and demands. So these are, are the main messages that we would like to um, take, uh, bring it to you uh, during, this met, during this meeting. Uh, of course, this was not my own work. I would like to thank all of you that did very enthusiastically cooperated to the, to the, to the results we got today. Uh, we had some interesting inspirational speeches from Koji and Susan. And we had a very strong group of facilitators that did uh, help us a lot to get to these final messages. And this could not have been uh, done without the participations and very enthusiastic and motivated participation of all of you uh, that are, that are uh, part of this group. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Jose. And now for the session on capacity, the, le the last one in these cross-cutting issues, I would like to call Mr. Joseph Nocton from the United States of America National Oceani Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Great. Thank you, everyone. And hello. Can I just confirm you're able to see the slides here? Yeah, we are. Great. Thanks so much. So yes, my name is Joe Naughton, and I served as the scientific rapporteur during session two and focusing specifically on the cross-cutting aspect of capacity. And I want to first thank my entire group and the facilitators um, for really a great discussion. I think our group was a little smaller than the rest, but it allowed us to really come together um, and really um, bounce some ideas off each other and really have some great discussion. And so we came together and we talked about what key messages we want to put forward in terms of um, decision makers and policy makers writ large. And so these are very much still in work and I'm not gonna walk through them at length by any means to keep it short and brief, but there are uh, five or so really high level themes that we kind of discussed often and were woven throughout these key messages and really that we've seen um, throughout all these presentations. And those are funding and so making sure not just equal but equitable and also sustainable to um, really ensure the capacity continues to grow and develop. Ocean literacy came up time and time again in our discussions, and I think it made its way into multiple messages, um, but really the development integration of ocean literacy is key to really understand the issues and the gaps for what needs to be um, developed in terms of capacity. Um, data access and management uh, being fair, equitable, um, we saw the, the fair data principles mentioned a couple of times in these presentations as well, but making sure, like I said, findable, accessible, interoperable, and uh, reusable. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and I'm just gonna go here. Again, these will be shared with the report as well, but these are some key themes. Um, but again, diversity, equity, inclusion, um, and then science communication. And science communication, similarly, we talked at length about and, and found its way to really a number of key priorities in terms of building capacity. Um, so lastly, just what I wanna focus on is the, the messages on future priorities. So these include these three, and I'll read them. The data and knowledge, data and knowledge needs to be accessible, fair, and leveraged to enable capacity building and encourage ocean literacy. Um, 
High quality trainings, internships, and exchange programs uh, have to be promoted and inclusive across um, all the all Atlantic flora uh, for all stakeholders, whether those are the decision makers or the key messages or the youth communities um, and what may it be. And then inclusion and engagement of indigenous and local knowledge and youth in all Atlantic network is critical for progress. Um, so these are our three key messages. And again, you'll see the re full reports that kind of talks through a lot of these, um, but I'll keep it short for now and just thank my group again and thank everyone um, for this conversation. Over to you, Adam. Thank you very much, Joseph. Uh, and uh, the last session that we had um, uh, was focusing the All Atlantic Ocean Research view from Brazil. And for this, this session tackled all the key priorities and all the cross-cutting issues that we have uh, heard so far. And I'd like to call Mrs. Mariana Veras from the University of Sao Paulo. Mariana? Good morning. Good morning. Let me share my presentation. Uh, it's working? Yes, it's working. Okay. If you can put it in presentation mode, the best. It's okay now? Not yet. Well, for me, it's in presentation mode. Okay, so um, go ahead. So, uh, first, uh, good morning to everybody. I have to say that I'm very happy to be here today as a health professional. And in the last two days, we had a nice discussion about four major themes, pollution, ocean climate, ecosystem, and aquaculture, and fisheries, with a diverse and multidisciplinary team of professionals from the academia, and from the government. And it was not so easy to summarize priorities. However, we agree that we have huge gaps in knowledge, infrastructure, and engagement for all the sectors. And uh, now at this moment, we should focus on the development of monetary system for pollution and climate and surveillance infrastructure for aquaculture and fishery. We need to work on the definition and establishment of national parameters and limits and standards for emerging pollutants. We need to perform vulnerability and risk assessment in coastal municipalities. Uh, we also need to invest in, develop, in the development of low cost and sustainable equipments and technologies. We need to encourage and improve national cooperation and collaboration in science. Uh, we urge to promote citizen science network for monitoring and the engagement of local communities. We need to use co-design as a principle for management strategies. We need also long-term research findings for the study and protection of biodiversity. And we also need to invest in human resource capacity building for ocean research and literacy. And uh, we also need to promote inclusive and accessible events or communication campaigns to exchange knowledge between academia, society, stakeholders, and decision makers. Uh, it's a lot of information, but we try to summarize our needs and priorities. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mariana. At the end, we couldn't see your presentation, but you went very well, and I think we all understood everything. It thank was you. just the points that I mentioned. Uh, thank you thank so much. Thank you. So uh, we are ending uh, this session. Thank you all the rapporteurs for sharing the workshop outcomes and priorities which I'm sure will be very relevant to guide the discussion and activities on the future for the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. And I, I, I will speak for myself, but I believe that everyone that is listening to us are really eager to start reading those reports that will uh, come out soon. So thank you all again. And we will now move to the next session. And once again, I kindly ask you to turn on your cameras for another picture. So I, I don't know, the third or the fourth for today? So, okay, good. Um, so continuing with today's program, it is now time to showcase dialogues across generations, jointly addressing how young 
and experienced ocean professionals can bring benefits for the communities. This session will be moderated by two of the Brazilian All Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassadors, Mrs. Julia Biscaya, Zamoner, and Raquelin Monteiro. The floor is yours. Good morning from Brazil, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, my name is Julia. And I'm with hi. my, uh, sorry, I'm with my friend Hakelini. <laughs> Say hi, hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Julia. So I'm Hakelini from Brazil, too. Me and uh, Hakelini, we are the All Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassadors from Brazil, together with our colleague Daniel, who unfortunately uh, couldn't be present here today. We are so pleased to be moderating these youth ambassadors and cross-generational talks. Mm -hmm. And uh, to start, we would like to introduce our guest speakers. Um, as representatives from the All Atlantic Ocean uh, Youth Ambassadors Network, we have uh, Eloise from Belgium, Gillian from Canada, Hoffman from Morocco, and Tendo from South Africa. As experienced ocean professionals representatives, we have Janice from the High Level Board Brazil and CG, Senior Advisor from the European Commission. Very welcome, everyone. Great, Julia. Uh, so before we begin our debate, uh, we feel it's important to share the Dow Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassadors track to this day. Uh, and we have become uh, new ambassadors in December 2020 during the third the Nano Atlantic Ocean Research Forum. Since then, we have been engaged in many activities such as infectious training, moderator training, training, mini seminars, and also our virtually early career Ocean Professionals Day, and also our Atlantic, our Atlantic, sorry. <laughs> And um, RE um, for the sustainable ocean, rethink our stewardship of oceans and our waters. Uh, besides many other projects, both locally and globally, some of which are we going to talk about today. And in all of them, we are always trying to connect people, science, and action for a sustainable future and the present as well. Well, uh, to begin our debate, we would like to invite uh, the experienced ocean professionals representative, CG, <laughs> you first. Uh, thinking of youth as an important driver for change, how can their role be seen from the perspective of experienced ocean professionals? The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Julia. And, uh... So I would like to thank really all of you for inviting me and a special thank you and greetings to our ambassador Ignacio and also State Secretary Marcelo Morales and of course Zaira and all the other people who are present now. So uh, let me share a couple of thoughts. So working in a systemic way with young people and young professionals as you are is also really a reconnection with the wider public, with society, to build confidence in a sustainable future. And why is that so? I mean, we know that young people have taken to the streets, they have mobilized demanding action, and they demanded a role in shaping this future. So alongside the array of policies and instruments being now put in place, to set the new direction of the coming years for our work along and across the All Atlantic. We have just heard in the previous section how this should take shape. I think the issue here is how really can young people and communities be mobilized and engaged to participating in make this happen? And this is central to legitimize the changes ahead, but also to legitimize our joint efforts. And you are really a fantastic group of very motivated young people. It is an opportunity, I think, to give civic action, volunteering, that you really dedicate 
your free time and you are you allow this to happen to fix the problems the challenges that we face that you face at local level and that we face globally along and across the atlantic and also around the world so if i look at, at some of the the characteristics and the qualities of young of you young people let me just say first of all i think you really want solution driven projects you want you're seeking transdisciplinarity because it's not enough only to, to work on one discipline you are the champions of global networking and communication tools twitter instagram is your home it's not for us you have innovative and fresh ideas, you know, it's a little bit the thinking out of the box. And I think through hackathons, you, what you have shown very often, it's that you are drivers and agents really for, in, for uh, innovative solutions, which also are linked to social innovation, which is very, very important at local level. You are not yet institutionalized in your perspectives. So this is a very often this is an advantage, and you work from a, a, from a local to a global really level, which you through your communication skills. One of the issues, one of the characteristics, I think, is also the drive that you have for the advocacy. And when we talk of advocacy, let me allow me to, to bring in the really the very important issues of inclusiveness and linking this to the principle of intergenerational equity, which states that every generation holds the earth and of course the ocean in common. So we have a common ground, we have common beliefs, which do not really divide us. And this really, this principle articulates a concept of fairness amongst the generations in the use and in the conservation of the environment and its natural resources along and across the Atlantic. And this is really also the principle, is the foundation of sustainable development. And I would like to suggest it is the principle for our joint work. Thank you. Thank you for this. And so let's move on to Janice. And how the Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance um, promotes interactions among the generations and why is it, it is needed to cooperate innovative pathways and to ensure that actions will bring, will bring results for the communities. Janice. Good morning. Yeah. Good <laughs> afternoon. Morning. Sorry, can I go ahead, Hakilin? Yes, for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. Well, first of all, I wish to thank the organizers so very much for the invitation to attend this meeting in, to address such an important subject, like my colleague Ziggy Gruber has just uh, clearly spelled out, you are a backbone to the Alliance, in fact, you're the future. Uh, before I get into your question, Hakilini, let's reflect a little bit on what does it mean to be a youth ambassador? Well, for students, for post-grad students, in your case, as Ziggy uh, has already expressed, not institutionalized, uh, colleagues. It could mean enhancing, highlighting a positive attitude, having a good academic performance, that's really important. Uh, developing leadership skills, you have been good, you have been proven the concept of that. And having an entrepreneurial spirit, this is what uh, drives innovation. And that all in one package in your respective communities. Um, that is a chance to grow your leadership and your communication skills and inspire others. I think this, re this is really important. You should serve the purpose of inspiration um, and take an active role in the main uh, problems that pertain to your community with regard 
to the oceans. So in the remit of your question, how does the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance promote interactions among generations and why this is needed to co-create innovative pathways? Um, I would say that uh, in the context of this All Atlantic Research Alliance, and from what we have heard this morning, uh, there is a clear proof of concept since its early days that this is the purpose for setting up such a program, reinforcing the need for continuity. We are here, Ziggy and myself and our colleagues uh, from all participating nations willing to bring uh, you, youth, students, and adult mentors together from across the oceans to promote our mutual understanding through different cultures and increase and unincreasing leadership skills by preparing you to make a difference in, our, in your communities. Um, I stress the different cultures. This is really important because um, this is what make, make us respect ourselves, our differences, our similarities. And this is really important for this program. I think that uh, via the uh, All Atlantic Research Alliance, we may be able to develop game changers change makers, influencers, coalitions, and sometimes even changing the narrative of the uh, elder, of the big guys within various sectors of the ocean domain. I can cite food security, biodiversity, <laughs> marine pollution, marine navigation, sports and recreation. We need the meeting of people the constructing together based on the most sparkling and clear evidence that the Atlantic Ocean is one that does not separate us north from south, east from west. We do bear different cultures and that is really important in our growing process. The other aspect that I wish to uh, bring to you, and it does pertain to the global scenario, and we wish to have a focus on that in, the, uh, in this alliance. There are global inequalities in science that is real and definitive. And this is another aspect that you guys can make a difference. You can raise and you can change the results by uh, integrating your knowledge and making this inequality uh, get smoother and not so strong in its lights. Try to minimize those damage effects. This is uh, something that we are doing in the All Atlantic Alliance, and this is a lesson for life. The other aspect is the pandemics. The pandemics has sparked a widespread reevaluation of many scientists' careers and lifestyles. Staff members from universities are reassessing where, where their values lie. Uh, but uh, my uh, concern is do not let those feelings add discontent among you. You are representatives of the future. You are early career researchers who must work longer and harder to successfully compete for a declining number of permanent posts at the universities. Say no to homeschooling. I think the interaction is absolutely important among students. Make going to work at sea, working in the field, more actable among you. And most of all, do count on us, uh, your mentors, your professors, and leaders and members of this uh, high level board to uh, help you in your endeavors. Thank you so very much.
Thank you so much for this, Janice. Um, this was amazing. Uh, Tiggy, now I would like to invite you to ask a question to our dear colleagues, Youth Ambassadors. With pleasure. <laughs> so, following the motto, connecting, acting, cooperating, which are your ambitions and needs as youth ambassadors and how can your action contribute to the objectives of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance? And the last part is and impact the context in which you live. So you have actually three parts. <laughs> the floor is yours. I'll go ahead and start. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Tando and I am the one of three South African youth ambassadors. So hello from this side of the world. Sigi, thank you so much for your question. And I, you know, um, it, it echoes a lot of what you and Janice have already said, because us as youth ambassadors, we are a really strong component of the Research Alliance due to our dynamic nature, because um, we vary in professions, um, allowing different views to be brought to the table. So we're also very incredibly professionally strong in our own right. If we're not leading um, research during our doctorate studies or postgrad studies, we're leading various councils and programs and NGOs um, and initiatives. And so now wants to be an included in multi-generational talks and you know these spaces of decision making. Um, it's from a place of wanting to voice either our individual experiences or from the communities that we're a part of. Sigi, you said we are the vessel of connecting to back to society, that social infrastructure we're trying to build, right? And maybe we're also trying to share some of the um, experiences from the various structures we lead. So, um, you know, on that we're dynamic in our thinking, we bring innovative ideas, um, bringing interesting networks. As you said, we're really trying to break down these cultural barriers, um, you know, these gender barriers as well. And we're so very passionate about connecting with one another um, outside of the community and very much within our ambassadorship as well. And um, we're really keen to work together. And you know, our generation, I always say, is cosmopolitan and that it has like it has a global footprint. So we we just get we just love traveling. We just go and with this traveling, we really start to bring um, a lot of nuances to experiences in, in our efforts towards stronger. Um, and resilient oceans and healthier oceans. Um, and so what I would like to say is what, what um, the Research Alliance has planned really well is to integrate the ambassadorship into the different joint pilot actions, allowing our inputs to filter through the work of the Alliance. Um, as Janice says, we are the backbone. And so we, you know, as much of, as, of it, it's a privilege to be an ambassadorship, we have a responsibility to carry it forward and drive the continuity. Um, an example would be the All Atlantic uh, Blue Schools Network. We have a strong involvement with them, with the booklet and the Ocean Literacy Festival that we've been doing, the All Atlantic podcasts. We've been a part of those very strongly. Um, so we are vessels um, for ambassadors to promote the objectives of the Research Alliance. From a South African context, if I could just take a second there, we've been also leading very strong initiatives and perhaps I'll touch on them a little bit later. Um, on the back of the Research Alliance platform. And so that gives a really strong message of that thinking global and acting local. And this is of course, with our support from the, the depart our Department of Science and Innovation and our National Research Fund. Um, and hopefully we can show that video soon. So through, through these local initiatives, we are able to bring the All Atlantic conversation to a local context. Um, and I think this is the same for my colleagues and friends around the Atlantic Basin. And this is allowing us to strengthen the objectives of the Research Alliance and drive its continuity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great, really great. Uh, I, I just took a couple of notes that I will then use in my last uh, messages. Thank you. Uh, Eloise, are you there? Hi. Yeah, I'm here. Hi. <laughs> um, thank you for having me. So I'm the Belgium Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassador. And so kind of reflecting upon the question you've asked us, I think, so um, as youth ambassadors, one of our big ambitions and need is to make sure the voice of youth is not only heard, but also recognized as equally important in both local and international discussions. And so as Tando has mentioned, 
As ocean professionals, doctorate students, postdoctoral researchers, we are at the forefront of our research, um, building expertise and as well as leading initiatives. And as early career ocean professionals, who are well placed to see what has to be done, uh, what has been done, what is yet to be done, and what should be done for our oceans and our youth, um, as both the future of youth and the oceans are strongly intertwined. And so I do think that the Atlantic Forum um, 2022 scientific event has done a great um, job in following the motto of connecting, acting, and um, cooperating by allowing us youth ambassadors to have an active role and involvement in the thematic workshops and um, across the four cross-cutting sessions. And so we've really been able to get fully engaged in the brainstorming sessions for the various themes um, and workshops and propose ideas of what we believe are important priorities for each of the thematic areas and cross-cutting sessions, um, that being data, infrastructure, engaged, and capacity. And so in doing so, we have been able to create strong dialogues, dialogues and um, co-design actions for the, um, with and for the entire scientific community present. Um, all with the goal to support decision making and uh, shape the future of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. And so overall, I just think, yeah, it's been a great kind of experience to to really for once have our our voice heard in shaping not only the alliance but I guess the future of the oceans and youth. So um, I think that's kind of one of our lasting impacts um, of the the coming year and generation. Thank you, Luis. What you said is really testimony to being recognized. You know, I think that is a very important keyword that we have to take on hammering, but also not only hammering, just take it on board. So thank you. Otman, thank you, your sir. turn now. Yeah. Hello. It's it's really it's really difficult to add something more than what have been said by Thando and Eloise. So Can't I'll... hear you. Uh, you are a, a bit, can you, the volume is not 100%. Can you hear me now well? Yes, Perfect. thank you. So I said, I, well, it's difficult to add something more uh, impactful. However, I will go with uh, a different route as for my background as a mathematician, when the question has been asked, we, dive, we divide it into a few answers. So the motto is connecting, and actually this is what we're doing now. We're connecting with each other, understanding what the issue is. And by connecting, meaning we don't go from just one side, but we get all the round table, meaning youth, early career professionals, uh, professors, mentors, everyone around the table. And through this connection, we can get uh, by what we've done on the first two days, uh, thematic and cross-cutting aspects, we've found some recommendations, issues, points that we can discuss, add it. And through these uh, options, we can have, like through these points mentioned, we can act on them and give some actions. As we know that we have some diversity, non-equality, and some problem of inclusion. And through these actions, we can have a solution. But we cannot have a unique solution holded by someone. We need what we call cooperation because we need to have a unique slogan. It's our ocean. It's without the cooperation, we cannot reach a solution that's for everyone. And this is where I'm coming from. We need to collaborate and use the motto, connect, act, and collaborate to have the successful as we need to be. Thank you. Thank you, Otman. I think it is our ocean, our cooperation, our action, just to summarize what you said, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you. So, Gillian. Well, Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Gillian, and I'm one of the three ambassadors uh, from Canada. So kind of like Otman said, it's kind of hard to build on top of so many good things that have already been said by my fellow ambassadors. Um, but one thing that uh, you had mentioned, like what of our needs as youth ambassadors. So I think one thing that was really great when we were all brought together is connecting kind of across the globe with that shared um, admiration for the ocean and ensuring that it's there for and sustainable for future generations. Um, and it's been really interesting to learn about how some of these issues that um, we have in Canada in regards to the ocean and learning 
about it are shared across the globe. So it really brings that context, that global thinking back to a local scale. So it's been really interesting to just kind of hear about that. Um, Again, for our needs as youth ambassadors, we've been with this opportunity, we've had exposure to a lot more different opportunities, bigger scale events, and often early career professionals are sometimes overlooked because even in the context of applying to jobs, coming straight out of um, graduate school, you know, you sometimes need that experience, but you don't necessarily have it because you haven't had those opportunities yet. Um, so I think that um, getting more exposure to these opportunities and making those connections has been a great thing about the ambassadorship and also learning from each other, um, different ideas and solutions that have been tried. I come back to this example that I had learned about at a global conference. Um, it was a Dutch startup in Amsterdam and it was this great um, bubble barrier reef for plastic and a way to stop having plastic pollution and bring it to the surface. And, you know, if you've never been in a global context conference, you might not have learned about that, but it was such a neat and innovative idea that you can then bring that back and say, like, can we learn from this? Um, and I think another, um, in regards to like actions contributing to the objectives, um, I think sharing and collaborating is a really, really big one. Um, often, times I have found now with our generation it's kind of shifting versus being kind of competitive in nature to being more collaborative learning from each other building on um, work that's already been done versus kind of working in your own silo so it's been really nice to share um, those opportunities and be really collaborative in nature. Thank you Julian. so it is really this opening up this learning by doing by interacting with others uh, by sharing by getting inspiration which has opened as well your minds your contacts and last but not least probably your professional development and opportunities and i think that is really great so thank you to all four of you i need to give back now the floor because I think it is the turn of uh, Janice. Thank you so very much, Ziggy. Um, I think I had uh, quite many questions that I would like to ask, but uh, I will keep it short. Um, can you give us some inspiring examples of actions that you are promoting or you could promote to raise awareness on what matters for citizens. Do we have to follow an order or can I ask for Eloise to uh, come up and um, provide her thoughts and ideas first? Louise, Eloise, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so something that has kind of briefly been mentioned before but I'll kind of expand on is um, a big project that as youth ambassadors we've been working on is the creation of blue school booklets so entitled bridging the ocean to be distributed to the network of blue schools across the Atlantic and so this project um, came about through brainstorming possible ways we could get involved in the Atlantic joint pilot actions with a few of us specifically being interested in ocean literacy and so we wanted our project to be able to aid educators in implementing ocean literacy in their curriculums, something that is still quite lacking in educational systems. And so our booklets each cover a different theme that we believe to be important subjects to be taught in school, and which would overall give youth a good grasp of why the oceans are important to all, both from a scientific, social, and even emotional perspective. And so far, we've fully finalized our first booklet, um, which is all about oceanic cycles. And we're in the process of writing our second and third booklets, which will explore ocean pollution and solutions and food security and society. And so we then plan for these booklets um, to be uh, distributed in printable versions um, to different schools across the Blue Schools Network and in a number of different All Atlantic languages. We also have uh, plans for a booklet on equations behind the ocean, so that will bring mathematical perspective, which Othman is very excited about, and also a booklet on the different types of ocean stewardship, which will highlight, highlight how we can all get involved in being ocean advocates and the various forms of ocean uh, professions out there more than just from an ocean science perspective. And so we also plan to have these booklets open access online 
in a digital as well as mm -hmm. digital format. Um, and so, yeah, it's been a great project to work on. And I'd like to take a moment to thank and acknowledge all the hard work that our cohort has put into making these books, as well as um, our mentor, uh, Emer, who's been a great editor, Ronaldo Cristofaletti um, from the Blue, Blue Schools Network, our amazing illustrator and designer who's made the book look beautiful, Leonard Ermel, as well as the Euro European Commission um, for supporting us. So yeah, thank you all for your work and we can't wait to share the final product with everyone. Thank you so very much, Louise. Well, I cannot wait to see the result of uh, such a great initiative. I think that uh, doing with passion via mathematical models would be a great perspective to bring to the table. Thank you, Eloise. And, and I really wish this uh, product will be out soon. This is really important. Thank you so very much. Uh, Sando, my sister from the other side of the Atlantic. Hello, yes. Thank you, Janice, for your question. Um, yeah, just to touch on, I think that we've been doing a couple of things and maybe I'll speak on the South African context because of you know, it's such a specific context, as you said, in the sense that there are global inequalities when we look at ocean conservation. And I think for me um, and my colleagues here in South Africa, we can recognize that there are socioeconomic challenges that we face in South Africa. And so a lot of our initiatives have been geared towards addressing socioeconomic challenges. And just to touch on what Eloise has said with the booklet, which we're all really excited about is, you know, it's translated in all Atlantic languages, but we're really here trying to um, secure funding to further translate this into um, a couple of South African languages like Isikosa, Sizulu, Sepedi and Afrikaans, um, so that it can, you know, be distributed further and we can start to engage with a wider community. Um, another initiative that we've really been working really hard on is more of a long-term one, which has been running now for the past eight months as an initiative called Expanding Horizons. And again, it speaks to ensuring that marginalized groups also feel a belonging to the ocean and are offered an opportunity to be a part of the efforts towards this healthy ocean and this inclusive ocean that we want, um, which is an overarching theme right of the ocean decade and the main objective of the Research Alliance. And so basically expanding horizons allows the opportunity for learners who um, would not otherwise have the opportunity to visit um, a really brilliant um, aquarium that we have in Cape Town, um, which brings experience of the, our diverse Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean to the public. And so learners are given the opportunity to experience the aquarium as a visitor, but also be behind the scenes. And in this behind the scenes visit, learners are, we really encourage them to ask as many questions. They're meeting biologists, they're meeting, you know, finance administrators, they're meeting oceanographic um, engineers, they're meeting a wide group of careers in the ocean space and not in the ocean space as well. And they're also, you know, really harnessing um, a practical, a hands-on experience to what they may be gaining in the classrooms which again, you know, um, speaks to them not being able to ever have these hands-on experiences that some of us are afforded. And so again, with the help of the DSI, the Department of Science and Innovation and NRF, we're able to bring these kids through on a monthly basis. Um, and, you know, another great way, we're trying to track their experience as well. So we, we're doing a lot of um, uh, assessments with them, asking them what they might want to experience versus what they actually do experience so that we can also better ourselves and learn what they need from us, right? Because in a sense, we can't always dictate what people need in, in this conversation. We need to spend the time to listen and tell us what, what they need. And so Expanding Horizons is a really great platform in that sense. And um, yeah, so that's just one of our really big initiatives that we're busy with in South Africa. And then we have also been conducting a bunch of cleanups I'm really being acting as activators of collaboration. So we've been working really closely with an NGO called the Beach Co-op, but our most recent cleanup, we brought in two NGOs um, and so started getting NGOs to work together as well and really activating that um, a platform of people trying to speak to one another and, and maybe even try to avoid recreating the wheel because often I think sometimes we start a lot of initiatives where people are already doing a really amazing things and we can just lean into that and build a stronger impact. Um, and maybe I'll just stop there. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so very much, Sandor. You've touched some uh, really important aspects that we have not uh, dealt upon uh, before. And I refer specifically to the work that uh, some very serious NGOs have been doing across the globe. Uh, here in Brazil, we have a very strong uh, uh, component of uh, one of them called Oceana. Um, but we have many others that are really uh, uh, working on this advocacy exercise to bring the, uh, the idea, the view of uh, our admiration for the ocean. So uh, I thank you so very much for that. And uh, I, if I could leave a final message to you, uh, Thando, you, we are the bridge for the present. I mean, we are the bridge for the present as mentors. You are the bridges for the future. You are the future mentors. So yes, you have a, a way forward. Thank you so very much. Uh, Otman, our mathematician. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Well, uh, as for the actions we did, we did the booklets and it's an amazing booklet. I wish we could show it. Yeah, it's so excited. And also we are on the process of writing a science diplomacy paper where we talk about the experience of the first cohort and the second cohort as its success and the things and the points we needed to have or to seek. And this process is taking a bit long time because we're trying also to gather information, trying to do the analysis uh, and not to rush it out to have a more viable paper to be published. On the actions I'm doing on the Moroccan side, we started an action called The Beach Is Not Until Summer, which is an action called The Beach Is Not Until Summer because we see that most people go to the beach on the summer and leave it on the winter. And we're trying to educate them that it's it's there the whole year. You just notice it on the summers. And this action is getting kids to go to the beach, to understand that it's not just until the summers that you go and enjoy it, you should enjoy it the whole year. It's 12 months of the beautiful sea. And also we're trying to innovate what we call beaches bin. And we're trying to do bins that are in the shape of fishes. And when you throw waste inside of them, it's look like a fish that's ate waste. It's an image that show what happens inside of the ocean when we throw plastic. Our fish eats those plastics and it's inside of them. It's a visual impact of them. We've also have done a wall, we call it wall of innovation where kids go there and they state a message to the next year, what they wanted to see the next year on the same beach. It was a beautiful event where we have met amazing kids and it shows the opportunity that even though we are youth, it's never enough to encourage youth to go there. And it's a message that I've always been given. The investment on youth is not a wasted investment. And this is why it comes to me that we've been given the opportunity, the, the Anchor Project, the, the Alliance have invested in us and the whole world has invested in us. And now it's our time to give this investment back to another people. Also, one of the actions that I'm co-leading with my university ambassadors is that we're trying also to go to uh, far away places from the ocean because we, we are lucky to be living near the oceans. Some people are not so lucky to see that. And we go to those places and we educate them about the importance of the ocean, about how it's beautiful, how we can, how even far away they can impact that. And these small actions, even they are small, they can be impactful by, by doing them right and by giving these kids opportunities. In the future, we are also planning to have camps where we take kids, make them learn and attract and see how they can innovate uh, either by doing small steps, writing words, writing poems. We can do a lot of things, even the smallest things. Thank you. Fantastic, Osman. Your uh, idea of bringing uh, a fish view with regard to plastic pollution to societies is incredible. I think it, it is a game changer. Once you watch what's going just underneath your eyes, you cannot simply avoid 
having an impact on that view. So uh, I, I congratulate you uh, for, for that uh, information that you bring to us and the idea that beaches are permanent and not just for summer is another game changer because most people think about the oceans like, well, in some places, unfortunately, as a litter, in other places as a, a, a way to uh, relieve the heat from summer. So it's much more than that. And this is uh, again, very important. So um, thank you so very much for bringing this idea. Before I pass on to Jillian, um, let me tell you that one of the um, uh, grateful things that I had in my career, and I didn't have the chance that you guys are having as youth ambassadors, was to do my post-grad studies in Canada. So um, I really uh, appreciate that um, we can exchange views. Since then, I've been very connected to, uh, to my Canadian colleagues and now to the world via the All Atlantic. Gillian, the floor is yours. Thank you. I think uh, my fellow ambassadors have given some really good, large scale, um, inspiring examples of some of the work we've done. But just to bring it down to maybe not as much smaller scale, but just a big impact that we can have is especially our generation is very much an online generation. And the fact that most people our age have a phone, have social media um, apps and use them regularly. And it's often how we take in a lot of information, we share information. And I think one thing that our cohort has done a lot of is using those social media platforms to share, um, not just highlight um, individual ambassadors, but also kind of share the broader message um, of the work that is being done together as well as individually and showcasing uh, just the broad range of work that we all do. So I think that's something that's really neat in the fact that you can reach so many people across those platforms. Like we've done some 24 hour events and you know you go back to like the youth ambassador twitter feed and it's exactly that 24 hours of just different events and information that was shared and it's kind of like this blitz on social media of so much information being shared and before i became a youth ambassador i mean i used twitter for all sorts of different things and then once i became a youth ambassador i realized how much of a scientific network there is on twitter um, and how uh, when we're doing these larger scale events, how much gets shared. And I think something really inspiring about that is each of us individually has a network that would see that message, that would see that post, whether it's a tweet or a picture, whatever it is. Um, but you don't really know the impact that that's going to have or who you're going to inspire with that tweet or that image that you post just because of the diversity not only in the worlds that we work in, we're all come from different places across the globe, but also the diverse network that we can reach of people because we're all connected uh, to so many people, whether it be youth, professionals, um, different underprivileged communities, indigenous groups. For myself, I used to work for an indigenous organization. So a lot of these opportunities wouldn't necessarily have reached these groups, but because I was involved in so much of this work, I could bring it back to the group and present these opportunities, um, global opportunities that might not have reached these communities. So I think that's inspiring in itself, just the reach that you can have with these social networks and the amount of work we do to highlight um, our youth. And you know, whenever somebody has something really exciting, it's like, okay, let's make a tweet about them or like, let's make a post on social media about them and everyone shares it because they're so excited. So it's really neat and it just shows people the diverse background you can have in ocean work. Thank you so very much, Gillian. Well, I guess that we are running a bit late in time, so I shall give the floor back to Hakilini and, and Julia. Uh, but before that, let me thank my dear colleague Ziggy Gruber for this uh, partnership in, in, in sharing our uh, knowledge on how we have started this whole thing of the All Atlantic uh, Ocean Research Alliance. It's been a great pleasure working with you, Ziggy. Thank you so very much. And obviously, it's been a great pleasure working with Zaira Turki 
and my colleagues from the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation to whom I express my sincere thanks for being part of this construction. Thank you. Thank you everyone for sharing your thought. This was amazing. Um, we'd like to share now uh, with you a few local activities our, our colleagues have been developing in their communities. Uh, they have provided us with video views, so let's play them. The ocean is key for us. Life would not exist. We have been developing a booklet series, Bridging the Ocean, to bridge the knowledge gap on oceanic topics such as oceanic cycles, pollution and food security. This booklet series has been translated into Spanish, French and Portuguese, and as South African Youth Ambassadors, we are working on getting them translated into five of our 11 national languages. By overcoming geographical and language barriers, we aim to promote and inspire ocean stewardship globally as well as locally. As South African ambassadors, we have activated Expanding Horizons, an initiative that speaks to ocean conservation in the most robust way, addressing socioeconomic challenges by ensuring that marginalized groups also feel a belonging to the ocean, as well as being a part of the ocean conservation conversation. Expanding Horizons exposes learners to a hands-on experience in the marine sector by supplementing what they're absorbing in the classroom. We believe that Expanding Horizons is a powerful initiative with the support of DSI and NRF and collaboration of Two Oceans Aquarium Education Foundation and SAILON in a way that informs future ocean stewards. As ocean ambassadors, we believe that the participation of communities in ocean-based events is crucial for creating awareness of healthy and resilient oceans. In order to promote ocean stewardship, South African ambassadors have hosted a couple of beach cleanups not only were we able to collect many kilograms of waste off our beaches, but we were also able to engage with the public on questions of ocean health and citizen science. Hi, I'm Eline, the French All Atlantic Youth Ambassador, and we are here in the University of Toulon at the Mediterranean coast in south of France. When I started my mission as Youth Ambassador, I conducted my PhD in Brest at the Atlantic coast and I worked on the ecological interactions between oysters and surrounding communities, specifically seaweed. Last September, I defended my PhD, became a doctor, and started a new job at the University of Toulon as a teacher in microbiology and a researcher at the Mediterranean Institute of Oceanography, the MIO. And now I'm working on microbial community in coastal ecosystems. Since my PhD and in parallel to my research activities, I participate in many communication events for civil society, citizens, students, as well as decision makers. Because beyond being a scientist, I think it is fundamental to share science with everyone. I devote a high amount of time in such activities to raise the interest for science and give the keys to understand the world actual challenges and how we can collectively move forward for a sustainable future. Concerning specifically the ocean and ocean science, this is our mission as scientists to share our knowledge and make people feel involved in the preservation of marine area. The ocean is a common good, and this is a responsibility we have as scientists. So I made a lot of talks for non-scientific audience, as well as activities in schools. I also translated the booklet written by some fellow youth ambassador in French to make the ocean cycles accessible to everyone. I also participate to international conference organized by the United Nations. I was part of the One Ocean Summit 
in Brest last February. And soon I will be at the conference in Lisbon organized by the United Nations to raise the voice of youth and early career researchers. As scientists, I believe that when the opportunity to speak is given to us, we have to seize it and raise the voice of change for a better future. I would end this video by saying that communication is the key. The sharing of knowledge is essential and we have to encourage the dialogue between science and society. Both sides have to learn from each other and we have to work all together. Thank you very much for watching and keep protecting our oceans. Wow, so after these amazing words, amazing engagement across the Atlantic and the globe as well, I think we are very grateful to this opportunity to express our message. And uh, before closing our event, I would like to say that this event in Brazil is the first part of the Our Atlantic Forum event in Washington in July, we are going to second part of this forum with the ministerial event. Julia, your mic is up. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> to finish this amazing session, I would like to invite everyone to give us one short take home message to feed into the event in Washington. The floor is yours, guys, please. Okay, shall I start? First of all, congratulations. I'm really, fun. I'm, I'm so lifted up when I see all the things that you have done. And I would like to propose a change in your name. You're not only All Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassadors, you are All Atlantic Ocean Youth Advocates, because I think that is a, an additional dimension that you have shown now in, with all your activities. And I also would like to invite you all to, to sign up to a network that I have created on the invitation of John Bell last year, which is called Ocean Bridges, which is precisely to create a platform for dialogue between experienced old people like me, and many others who will hopefully sign up and uh, fantastic young people like you. So with that, thank you so much. And I look forward also to see the fish. Please bring it to Washington because it's important that you show actually what you have also developed and the blue books. Thank you. Congratulations again. So Jenny. Well Jacqueline, if I may say just a few words from my part, it's been a real delight to be a part of this session. I'm positively surprised to the extent possible with what you guys have come up with. So I wish to congratulate you deeply from my heart for the work you have been doing. Remember, Ziggy talks about ocean bridges. You are the bridges for the future. So do engage as Jose Milbert has shown us with uh, some results and, I, and ideas uh, in your work. And uh, do it with passion, never surrender, because there would be difficult times ahead. Don't pay any attention to that. Keep on going. Thank you. 
Thanks, Janice. Tango, please. Would you like to say something? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for the session, for Julia and Raquelin for organizing it, and Siggy and Janice for your amazing questions and conversation, and of course, my fellow ambassadors who I'm so very fond of and respect so much. And I guess going on into Washington, I guess I really hope I meet some of you guys in person, that we can continue the conversation um, and really continue to make impact together. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Eloise? Yeah, um, yeah, thank you again for having us and having this great conversation. Um, I'll keep it short, short and just say um, engage, listen, um, and acknowledge youth um, in all steps um, as you move forward. Great. Ottoman, please. Yeah, uh, thank you to everyone. Thank you for giving us the floor and thank you for listening to us and being our mentors in all of the sessions. And I will end up with three words, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We need best of this, not more of this. We need just best diversity, best equity, and best inclusion, because more sometimes is not the answer. Thank you. And finally, Gillian. Yeah, I'll just reiterate what everyone has said and say thank you, you know, for this opportunity to bringing the youth ambassadors into this conversation. And I am looking forward uh, to Washington finally getting some in-person events with the cohort because we got brought on in the middle of the pandemic. So it's been hard uh, for us to get together. But now that we actually have an in-person event, I think it's been refreshing uh, for a lot of us. And one thing just to end off, I think collaboration over competition is kind of a big one. You think about how big the Atlantic Ocean is and you think, um, I think that there is enough space uh, for all of us to succeed in our work. And I think it's really great uh, to collaborate and that uh, we can kind of build, build off of each other and learn from each other. I think uh, I can say for me and uh, Hakilini when I say that we are so happy with the result of the session. So thank you so much guys for this and see you all in Washington. Thank you all. Well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Kathleen and, and Julia, for this uh, very interesting session. And I don't know if everyone would agree with me, but uh, uh, with uh, ambassadors' happiness and energy, I think uh, we uh, all uh, uh, are contagious about with it. Uh, and, and it's really inspiring to see what you have been doing. And uh, I hope you can join. Uh, the invitation made by Ziggy to uh, uh, participate in the ocean bridges. Um, so we have, um, we will now have a short break to recover some energies and we will be back uh, as we are uh, some minutes uh, delay. We will have a break only of six, well now ten, uh, five minutes uh, and we will resume here uh, uh, at uh, 11, uh, 11 a.m. Yes. No, 11.15, sorry, 11.15 uh, Brazilian time. Uh, so in five minutes. And meanwhile, you will see uh, some videos of the All Atlantic Ocean Research uh, Alliance. So thank you, and we will be back in five minutes. Thank you.
upscale research and innovation cooperation within the Atlantic Basin, from Antarctica to the Arctic, under the motto, Connecting, Acting, Cooperating. Based on the ideas of co-design, alignment, and use of existing resources, six ambitious and long-term collaborative pilot joint actions will be developed, supporting the implementation of the Galway and Belem statements. All Atlantic Ocean Capacity Development and Training Platform. All Atlantic Aquaculture Technology and Innovation Platform. All Atlantic Marine Biotechnology Initiative. All Atlantic Data Enterprise 2030. All Atlantic Blue Schools Network. All Atlantic Marine Research Infrastructure Network. There is an important discrepancy within Atlantic countries in terms of ocean research capacities. The pilot joint action on ocean capacity development plans to establish the All Atlantic Training Platform, AATP, as a tool to identify training needs, gaps and initiatives, and create workshops, summer schools and floating universities for the benefit of early career scientists and technicians in ocean science streamline and bring together existing training measures, adapt contents to new challenges, and find new and attractive formats to include all stakeholders is essential to provide the best possible education for young talents. A broad road of capacity development at all levels is the only way to create the science we need for the ocean we want. With declining capture fisheries and an increasing demand for seafood products, expanding sustainable aquaculture production through enhanced industry-academia interaction is key to ensuring long-term seafood products. Based upon the European experience of the establishment of ETIP, the European Aquaculture Technology and Innovation Platform, and now using the Brazilian aquaculture sector as a case study, and applying the same methodology to other all-Atlantic national aquaculture sectors. This pilot joint action will consider the steps required in the design, implementation and management of a multi-stakeholder all-Atlantic aquaculture technology and innovation platform, AAATIP, following the principles of collaboration, cooperation and shared ocean resources. A roadmap for the strategic progress of the aquaculture sector among the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance partners will be developed with engaged stakeholders working towards identified strategic research and innovation agendas for national sustainable aquaculture development. Working towards an All Atlantic Aquaculture Technology and Innovation Platform will seek to safeguard a sustainable source of seafood in harmony with the aquatic ecosystem and climate objectives ensuring a dynamic and expanding Atlantic blue bioeconomy. Fulfilling the promise of marine biotechnology as a source for environmental and biomedical applications is still challenging. The pilot joint action All Atlantic Marine Biotechnology Initiative, AA Biotechmar, is a collective effort to support the development of new and emerging technologies intended to improve human health, encouraging the sustainable use of marine resources through marine biotechnology and advanced technologies in aquaculture, food production, fisheries management, and environmental monitoring through an enhanced industry academia interaction serving as a platform to discuss the means to harness marine biodiversity full potential in biotechnological applications. AA Biotechma will promote collaboration among countries of the Belem and Galway statements through workshops and technical visits, identify best methodologies for technology transfer, promote outreach, engage ocean leaders to support the blue growth and co-design a roadmap and action plan for the development of marine biotechnology in the Atlantic. Designing innovative and effective policies for ocean sustainability requires accurate observations and scientific knowledge. Co-responsibility, 
co-ownership and co-implementation of scientific data will be the pillars for addressing key common areas of interest. All Atlantic Data Enterprise 2030 Pilot Joint Action aims at creating a one-stop, user-friendly transatlantic platform for gathering natural, social, and humanistic scientific data. The All Atlantic Ocean Data Space, AAODS. Through the implementation of guidelines and legislation regarding Atlantic data processing, the All Atlantic Data Enterprise 2030 will support transatlantic information and data sharing in the spirit of open science and the fair care principles. The establishment of the All Atlantic Ocean Data Space will ensure that in the future, all stakeholders have free access to relevant data, thus safeguarding sustainable stewardship of the Atlantic Ocean. The ocean influences our lives, and our daily actions influence the ocean. Increasing awareness and engaging society for a change of behavior to ensure a sustainable ocean is crucial. The All-Atlantic Blue Schools Network Pilot Joint Action, AABSN, aims to connect schools from the Atlantic countries to rise and promote ocean literacy and society awareness with no geographical, cultural, social, or language boundaries. All united by the Atlantic in a powerful ocean literacy movement, the All-Atlantic Blue Schools Network will promote a bottom-up process where each school builds its own project based on its socio-cultural economic reality. Linking all schools together will enhance knowledge exchange and create synergies. Any sector of the society can be part of this process, supporting with educational resources, knowledge, ideas, and hereby helping to generate responsible and active generations that contribute to the ocean's sustainability towards the Generation Ocean. Marine research infrastructures are key to understand ocean processes. They give access to the necessary knowledge for a sustainable development of sea-related activities. The Pilot Joint Action All-Atlantic Marine Research Infrastructure Network, AA Marinette, will provide tools to support a transatlantic network of research infrastructures initiatives, promoting transnational access and other methods for sharing infrastructures in the Atlantic area. AA Marinette will work as a platform where stakeholders can share information about planned observation activities and available spare capacities, creating a forum where thematic networking and synergies will bring a better articulation of infrastructure-related activities in the Atlantic Basin, improving the support of multidisciplinary science to address global societal challenges. AA Marinette will support the Belem Statement, of which signatories intend to cooperate on marine research and innovation to increase operational efficiencies by optimizing the appropriate use and sharing of research infrastructures and access to and management of data platforms. So, get involved and help make our Atlantic a better, bluer place for all. So, hello uh, once again and welcome back. I hope that the videos you have seen strengthen your availability to connect, act and cooperate, as Sig said. 
in scope of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. So following this very rich dialogue in the This session gathers partners and institutions engaged in the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance with the participation of the Blaine and co-chairs and high All Atlantic High Level Board observers. This session will be moderated by the Secretary of Policies for Training and Strategic Actions from the Brazilian Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, Mr. Marcelo Morales. Secretary, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia, and I'm really very glad uh, to introduce the session celebrating the achievements of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. And uh, in this session, uh, we gather uh, the partners and the institutions engaged the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance with the participation of the Belém and Galway co-chairs co and All Atlantic High Level Board observers. Uh, we would hear uh, about the core values that uh, make this alliance, about it, its vision, and it is solid foundation for the common engagement and strate strategic partnership. It is an important moment to celebrate and take uh, stock of the achievements uh, made as this is perhaps the, the last time in this group will assemble uh, such uh, important uh, engagement. We would like to thank them all and uh, for their dedication and that their uh, uh, predecessors. And we will look forward to the high level event in Washington DC and the All Atlantic Declaration. And uh, I would like to give the floor to uh, Dr. Maria Zaira Turki uh, from the National Council for Scientific and Technological Development, CNPQ, Director of Institutional Cooperation and Belém Co-Chair uh, representing Brazil. Thank you, Zaira. Yeah, thank you, Secretary Marcelo Morales. Good morning and good afternoon to all the participants of our All Alliance 2022 Forum. It's a great pleasure and honor to be together today and celebrate this important milestone in our alliance. I want to greet and thank especially my dear colleagues and friends in this co-chairs and high-level board session who have contributed to all the achievements we have reached during the past years and so far. With constant and dedicated engagement in tackling our shared goals and values in the scope of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. In a special way, I wish to thank John Bell and Maria Cristina Russo who have supported our cooperation from long times, and certainly my friends Sigi Gruber and Janice Trotek that uh, helped me in the, as a high-level board. Thank you very much for all the cooperation. I also want to express my satisfaction and gratefulness to all those who have spent great efforts in the organization of this important forum coordinating and co-organizing numerous activities with the aim of building together future pathways of our alliance. This scientific dialogue promoted through the event in Brazil and paved the way to the high-level ministerial event in Washington is fundamental in order to really leverage where we are and fine-tune where we want to lead to and to go forward. The scientific workshop held in the first two days of our event and brilliantly presented today by our scientific rapporteurs can highly contribute to the process we are fostering through scientific debates, joint research and innovation projects, so as 
through scientific diplomacy efforts, which are always fundamental to bridge science and decision making, thus leading us le leading to more concrete action actions for the benefit of our societies and of the environment we live in. Many points which have been raised in this forum can help us to plan our future actions, making them closer to the demands expressed by the stakeholders involved, which are rich of experience and competences, which can guide us making evidence-based policies more likely to be put in place. We understand that an emerging need which is common to all fields and priorities which have been debated is the necessity of having continuous support, in particular funding opportunities and mechanisms in the scope of sustainability, fostering the continuity of ongoing and new actions. This aspect is fundamental and having roadmaps that are constructed in a collaborative, co-created, inclusive, and knowledge-based manner is crucial. In order to make the best use of policies, programs, funding, and partnering opportunities, which we can collectively offer. Considering the high level of the capacities involved in this context, and also the diversity of the debate involved in this process, we deem that the efforts spent so far are of great value and we trust that they have the potential of generating impact and inspiring actions to follow up in this construction. Our role as co-chairs of this important alliance is to bring forward the voice of our scientific communities and societies gathered in this joint and successful endeavor. And the work being done during this forum is very precious to guide us in future challenges. We can make treasure of the findings which result from the scientific workshop which can enrich the priorities set in the incoming All-Atlantic Declaration, which is being constructed. The debates occurred in the context of this forum reflect the dialogues which inspired the declaration and which can guide the future steps of our cooperation and alliance. Based on a bottom-up approach, listening to demands and to possible solutions presented. We have heard many inspiring messages in this dialogue, such as the need to be prepared for future societal, environmental and global demands, prioritizing resilience of our societies, of our environment and of our ocean. The need to seek solutions for sustainable funding supported by converging policies. Promote inclusive science, leaving no one behind, seeking for an ever more inclusive approach for engaging our diverse societies and valuing their traditional knowledge. Acting together to capitalize efforts, knowledge, data, and our mutual potential improve the effective engagement of different stakeholders in the process in order, in order to possibly reach and engage them at all levels and scales. Investing in citizen science and multidisciplinary capacity building approaches, improving knowledge accessibility. Believing that international cooperation is a key value and a solution for change, which can mutually strengthen us and give more hope and perspectives to our future generations. Today's event has provided many rich ideas and also concrete and technical solutions, which, can build, which we can build upon and we believe that the mutual trust, 
which has unified our alliance, is an optimal ground to continue our common construction, involving our scientific communities together with our talented and inspired young generations, so as those who have been sharing their knowledge and experience along the case. For all these reasons, I am truly glad today to celebrate our joint achievements and faithful that we are be being led by a promising wins for positive new targets and results we can build together, capitalizing what we are constructing and going beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zaira, for your uh, important words. And I give the floor now to Francisco Werner, Assistant Administrator at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, uh, U.S. Department of Commerce, uh, Galway, uh, Galway uh, Co-Chair, U.S. Thank you very much. Um, good morning. I uh, would like to ask if I'm actually, uh, if the video is working, because I, I cannot see video. Is that is my video on? Yes. Hello? We, yes, yes. Yes, we can see. Because okay, I can't see any of you, unfortunately, but I can hear you well. And, and thank you so much for the opportunity to speak and, um, and to follow Zaida. That was there were, um, really inspiring remarks um, um, from Zaida. Good to see you. Um, anyway, good morning and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, it is a real pleasure to join you for the final day of the All-Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance uh, uh, scientific event. Um, and I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to address um, perhaps the core values of, of the Alliance and its vision. I would like to start by, by thanking our Brazilian colleagues for hosting this extremely successful um, All-Atlantic scientific event. And I'd like to think that the partnership between the United States and, and Brazil and, and co-hosting this, this 22 forum um, reflects that spirit of, of cooperation that was so clear um, at, at the meetings today between the North and South Atlantic um, that the All Atlantic um, uh, aim, aims to foster. Um, it is really through everyone's shared commitment and, and contributions, um, along with the work of thousands of scientists and policymakers across the Atlantic, that the Alliance continues to grow in its success and is able to address many of the vital advances that, that we need um, uh, that we need to make in order to increase our understanding of the Atlantic Ocean as a system. And it is in that spirit that we gather to hear the diverse voices and perspectives to support the science-based foundation of the All-Atlantic Research Alliance. The work that was presented is critical in responding to environmental and climate threats that the Atlantic Basin and the coastal regions face and it directly impacts the health and well-being of the Atlantic Ocean and the communities and the people that depend on it. It was really exciting to see all the people that turned out for this historic co-hosted forum across all the continents and to hear this morning's um, various readouts, which I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time thinking or, or talking about later. Over the course of the scientific event, um, <clears throat> the discussions focused on seven key priorities and, and four cross-cutting areas um, that help focus our attention on the needs of today, but it also provides a blueprint for the needs of the future, perhaps more importantly. These you know, topics were ocean climate, ecosystem-based management, aquaculture and fisheries, and others. And in this morning's discussion and, and readout, there was a remarkable convergence, despite the breadth of topics that, that were considered, there was a remarkable convergence in the readouts on, on, on the important topics that, that we need to take on. And I wanna congratulate the, 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 all the working groups, the rapporteurs and, 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 and everybody who reported and, and really making such a eloquent and compelling case in terms of what we need to consider going forward. In no particular order, uh, Inclusivity was, was highlighted, the need to increase capacity, networking, local knowledge, citizen science, training programs. Of course, data and the supporting infrastructure, um, following care and fair uh, guidelines, access to research vessels, new technologies. And, and, and as was mentioned by Zaida, the governance structures building on inclusiveness, 
collaboration and support by sustained or through through sustained and, and flexible funding. And there were others, but again, it was it was such a clear description of, of and convergence of ideas that again I congratulate uh, everyone at the meeting. Throughout the discussions, it was it was clear that it was that, that, that there was an identification of, of collective strengths, but there was also there was also you also identified important areas um, where necessary collaboration um, of all Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance are are, are, are needed. I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll 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 note a comment that Dr. Spinrad, our no administrator, mentioned in his remarks. Um, the U.S. is committed to building a climate-ready nation in the coming decade, but it cannot do so without there being a climate-ready world. We must continue our cooperation and discussions on climate change, we and we must extend that cooperation to communities that are all too often left out of the discussion. Combating climate change is a priority for the United States, and we recognize that the Atlantic Ocean plays a major role in the global climate system. Leveraging current and future partnerships will yield the greatest results in overcoming this challenge for the United States and the Atlantic community. We also rely on the Atlantic for fisheries, recreation, transportation, and many other uses. And it was pointed out, protecting public health, safety, and the environment means protecting the health of our oceans, identifying and implementing effective measures to decrease ocean pollution and marine debris is essential. Protecting the Atlantic Ocean also includes collectively working to sustainably manage fish stocks and improve aquaculture to feed a, grow, a growing uh, global population. We, like many others, recognize that ecosystem-based management is a critical in fisheries, and we're working to build a climate-informed foundation for ecosystem-based management. Observations. Observations were highlighted just about in every every discussion as, 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 as a necessary component to expand our knowledge and understanding of the Atlantic Basin. This is an exciting time for NOAA and the Global Ocean uh, Observing Community as many organizations recognize the utility of ocean data to a variety of vital socioeconomic dimensions also encapsulated in the ideas of a knowledge-based uh, new blue economy. We, we, ha we hope and we have to build on long-standing partnerships in ocean observing and look forward to fostering new ones. Many of the conversations this week also considered how we can promote and foster liter ocean literacy and make sure that all stakeholders, including policymakers, early career scientists, researchers, and others are able to engage and contribute to sustainable management of, ocean, of the Atlantic Ocean, regardless of geographic constraints recognizing that many stakeholders are in traditionally underserved communities, we also discussed how we can work together to develop a sustainable and inclusive ocean economy. And as I mentioned before, a knowledge-based knowledge new blue economy that reduces the effects of climate change and protects vulnerable populations and advances racial equity. As the adage goes, a rising tide lifts all boats. However, it's also important that all boats be seaworthy. It is by measuring, it is by ensuring that our work in the Atlantic considers underserved communities, increases capacity of those communities, and minimizes the disproportionate effects of climate change, hence lifts all boats. In closing, a um, few, few remarks. Um, the United States believes that effective policy must be guided by science. Without sound science, we would be unable to effectively and efficiently address growing issues in the Atlantic Ocean and along coast and re coastal regions. The scientific event of the past days was an opportunity for all of us to join together and look back at the successes that we have already achieved, use the lessons learned to work towards a healthier and more sustainable Atlantic Ocean. The discussion shared and lessons learned from the scientific event over the past three days are critical for addressing the threats to our oceans as well as guiding future scientific research. Your discussions this week will influence the ones that will take place in the Atlantic, all Atlantic ministerial uh, event in July. And they will also be crucial as we continue to build collaboration in ocean research and innovation and sign the first ever all Atlantic ocean research and innovation 
Alliance Declaration. I thank each and every one of you for your dedication and furthering our goals and helping furthering our goals in scientific collaboration and inclusivity across the Atlantic and lending your experiences um, and expertise uh, to the discussion in the last few days. I look forward to furthering our collaborations and, and help us advance the work of the Alliance over the coming years. Once again, thanks everybody. And I hope that we have the opportunity and you will be able to all join us um, to the streaming of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance Forum Ministerial event this July. Looking forward to seeing you then. And thank you very much for the opportunity to offer some thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco. I'm really very glad to, to hear you, you uh, saying words about the decision based in science. We all are aware about climate change and the impact and work together with the scientists uh, in adaptation and mitigation and for the ocean more inclusive, uh, economically inclusive and sustainable. Thank you very much. And I give the floor now to John Bell, Director of a Healthy Planet, uh, Doctor General for Research and Innovation, uh, Belen and Galway Co-Chair, European Commission. John Bell, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Bom dia, e nosso sinceros agradecimentos ao Secretario Morales, ao Zaira, e a Cisco. Uh, so um, thank you very much, Secretary Morales, Zaire and, and Cisco, and all of our colleagues here, uh, Janice and all of our colleagues as co-hosts of the 2022 Forum for this incredibly important and timely opportunity to prepare ourselves for the next chapter and to build the organization of this high level scientific event. But it's also, as Cisco has been signaling, it's an event that really gives us great courage and hope uh, to move forward at a time when it's badly needed. I think we see from our cooperation and for this great work that has been brought together uh, in Brazil today that our All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance uh, is a successful model of multilateralism and science diplomacy from which we can take heart and inspiration uh, when developing other multinational initiatives in the fu future. But more importantly, you see, and I was really inspired by the, uh, the next generation, if you like, and when I say the next generation, the generation who will mentor us on how to look after our oceans more properly, that we've moved from being an alliance to being a community. And this is, this is really uh, very inspiring. And this, our Atlantic community, we have great expectations for this 2022 forum with this great start from a scientific and a political perspective at a pivotal moment for our ambitions together as people living and working around this common ocean of ours and in setting a new ambition to achieve a better future for our common ocean. Wherever we come from, whatever our age group is, um, whichever is our angle on this uh, uh, process. So as we very often say here, we're at a critical moment where science needs to give courage to policy, hope to citizens, opportunity to innovators and respite to nature. And I think uh, Rick, Rick's message at the outset, which Cisco has just reiterated, that to be climate ready nations, we need a climate ready world, but to be a climate ready world, we need a climate ready ocean community. Um, you know that you have our commitment and support here in this uh, European Union of ours that's going through so much at the moment. We're committed to this action. We're committed to doing it over time in response to some of the comments from the next generation of leaders. And we're committed to you, our partners in science and research and innovation from shore to shore. We demonstrated this, I think, by investing over 250 million euro in 37 brilliant research projects together, including the coordination support actions that we see here through Sophia and our colleagues uh, working to support the Galway and Belém statements. Our projects uh, are having and will have a long lasting impact on the Atlantic with an improved understanding of the Atlantic system and the development of solutions to restore its health and to exploit its resources sustainably for the benefit of all its people. I think the inclusivity point has come across again and again is critical. Just to take two examples, Atlantos, which created a much more integrated 
networked and aware community of experts that is willing to advance Atlantic Ocean observing uh, through a specific international program, I think has provided the foundation for a fit for purpose observation system. And observation is the beginning uh, of uh, transition. And the Atlas project, which demonstrated how deep water sponge grounds and cold water coral reefs ecosystems are key habitats, but also show their vulnerability to climate change, ocean acidification, and of course, human activities. Atlas, by the way, discovered not less than 12 new species. So the spirit of discovery is moving amongst us and should inspire the next chapter. The different working groups and joint actions are also essential to keep structuring and developing the scientific community. The most impactful actions will need to be sustained. And I count on all of us here to find ways to do so. I think somebody talked earlier on about predictable investment and financial support in this work. Strong participation of the scientific community in the round tables of the previous two days, which has been so evident, Cisco was uh, giving us some insight into uh, how that has uh, fed into our conclusions here, demonstrates that I think we are moving together in the right direction, that we're answering a need uh, for coordination and strategic support from our scientists and stakeholders, uh, and that we give them some kind of predictability and direction in that. I'd like particularly to praise uh, the active role of, I think it's called youth, but they look like particularly wise people to me and the early ocean career professionals in the event. At a certain point, I felt like putting my feet up and just listening. Uh, and, and in a way, sometimes it's like when my, 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 my younger generation, my family decided to learn how to drive and could drive better than me. It's one of those moments where you feel you should actually attend and listen and watch. Uh, here in the European Union, 2022 is the European Year of Youth. And our Atlantic Youth Ambassador Programme is one of the flagships in this special year. Uh, and it's stressing that the next generation have a right to resilience. Rights are not simply in space, they're rights in time. Uh, and I think this is a, a, this conversation and the way in which you've shown leadership today uh, in reporting out from this is, is really um, critical for the future. You know, in the European uh, Union, we've been uh, resetting um, what we're for and how we work in this European Green Deal, which is to look beyond current policy and investment cycles and set a goal of becoming a climate neutral continent that is living uh, with in the planetary boundaries by 2050. Our aim, if you like, if the EU is to be seen as a peacemaking uh, process, our aim now is to make peace with nature. And that can only be done by working with science and researchers across generations and communities and with those who are most affected. In our Horizon Europe program, we will devote at least 35% of the 90 billion euros to funding different actions that it will impact on climate. There will be a new wave of research and innovation partnerships with our member states and partners contributing in key areas, including the blue economy. And we're launching a whole new array of what we call Green Deal missions, which are very large scale, impactful acceleration using research and innovation to transform key systems like the ocean, where we're going to launch uh, in the coming days, the charter at Lisbon, to restore our ocean and waters by 2030 with very specific targets to address the needs of what we call the hydrosphere. And we're inviting you into this opportunity where we'll be investing heavily in this because we need our international partners to work together with us to work out and accelerate and scale solutions, whether it's the digital twin of the ocean, which President von der Leyen announced at Brest when many of your leaders were present, or it's large scale blue parks for the restoration of marine protected areas, or the decarbonization of our economy, or the uh, a systemic address of the problems of pollution. So we invite you to join us in co-creating this mission thinking in the weeks and months ahead, and the mission will support the work of our Atlantic Alliance as an additional offer from the European Union to our partners to cooperate for the future uh, of our oceans. But our All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance will, will now provide a new convening point uh, to build and secure this work of our research communities. The Belém Statement and the Galway Declaration, the work will continue and their activities and scientific cooperation will deepen and support what is happening here. And our thanks to all our partners in both of those great alliances. I'd like to thank in particular today, Sophia Cordero, 
for your remarkable work in developing Anchor to support this project and to launch it forward, this programmatic support. It hasn't been easy, Sophia, since the beginning, but it has been a remarkable journey, the beginning of a great journey here in Belém. And we'll build on your great work and the work of the Anchor Project and the next steps for Belém cooperation activities will build on the work that you've been so central in taking forward. And our joint actions, I think, in particular, will need to find ways to build up uh, on this. So hopefully, Sophia, we'll have a chance to thank you in person uh, for your remarkable contributions. So to conclude, I think, on three uh, main messages, um, I think with the new declaration that will be signed in July in Washington, the Alliance is moving towards the future with a renewed spirit of cooperation and a determination to give the predictability that people have been asking to today for this ambition to continue over time, to provide new opportunities um, coming for our scientific community to cooperate and develop and build. And we've listened to the points, I think Cisco listed them very well, this appeal for access and capacity, for data, for inclusivity, uh, for financial um, predictability. We will work together with our scientists and stakeholders in listening to them across uh, cultures, across generations, across different shores, as they will be the leadership, the protagonists who will face the future and develop the world that the Alliance is designed to prepare from pole to pole, from shore to shore, from generation to generation. And last but not least, science is showing us that we are running out of time, but we're not running out of ideas and we're not running out of ambition. And in this decade of ocean science for sustainable development, this is our decade of decision. So let us use this alliance to discover the ways in which we can reach the next ocean that can help us to move forward in a sustainable and safe way. And Europe, as you know, is committed uh, to this process. So obrigado a Brazil, a Brasilia, to the United States, to our workshop leaders. We need to build this science, as Cisco said, into our US event and set a new agenda, new ambition, as we say, as Rick was saying at the outset, to have prepared communities in a prepared world for the opportunities that our ocean continues to provide us. Obrigado, Brazil. Obrigado, Brasilia. Thank you. Thank you, John Bell. And thank you for helping us to keep this spirit of cooperation. And now I, I give the floor to Maria Cristina Russo, Director for Global Approach and International Cooperation, uh, Directorate uh, General for Research and Innovation from the European Commission. Maria Cristina, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. You. And uh, good afternoon from Brussels. Good morning, to Brazil. And welcome to all the friends and colleagues there and uh, the authorities. Difficult for me after such eloquent speeches, in particular the one of my colleague John Bell, to add something in terms of the content, of the scientific content of this uh, important All Atlantic Ocean Alliance. But uh, I would uh, um, speak uh, of the importance of what we are doing from an international cooperation uh, point of view. Before doing that, of course, I would like to thank uh, the Brazilian and uh, US for hosting of this event. I would like to thank the Brazilian Ministry of Science and Technology Innovation and the Secretary Marcelo Morales. Of course, my dear colleague and friend, Maria Zaira Turki. I would I, like also to thank uh, our ambassador, uh, the EU ambassador to Brazil to be there. And uh, Ignacio, your presence shows the importance of research and innovation as a building block of our cooperation with Brazil. Of course, I would like also to thank uh, our uh, colleagues and friends uh, from uh, the other countries outside Europe, uh, the United States, uh, in Cisco, for your eloquent speech, and all the others, uh, Karina Pombo from Argentina. I will not name you all. We are all colleagues and friends. We don't have a lot of time. So if I've forgotten anybody, please forgive me. But just, you know, thank you to everybody. What I would like to say is that uh, for us, this All Atlantic Ocean Alliance, it's really a huge achievement. It is a huge achievement from a scientific point of view, and it's a huge achievement from a, a science diplomacy point of view. Many years ago, in uh, 2013, uh, when I had the honor to, talk, to take up this position of Director for International Cooperation, the Galway Alliance was just launched. 
Uh, it was an alliance on ocean cooperation, which was signed uh, between the European Union, the US and Canada. And uh, at that moment, as maybe you already heard me saying that, uh, we had a dream, a dream with some visionary people like John Bell, like me, like Siggy Gruber, and many of you present here, to, to extend this alliance also to the south of southern Atlantic. It was uh, considered uh, difficult at the beginning, and we really deployed all our efforts uh, with all of you in order to show how with science uh, we can uh, cross any boundary, we can really enhance our cooperation, and we have managed to, done, to do in Belém what uh, seemed to be impossible, meaning join the north part of the Atlantic with the southern part and have the Belém declaration to which Brazil and South Africa formally joined uh, this, uh, all, this uh, Atlantic Alliance, uh, which was established, as I mentioned, with, with, uh, with Canada and the US and the EU. Then um, uh, we have been working a lot also in order to expand these alliances to other um, countries, strategic countries, which uh, are, uh, share with us the shore of the Atlantic. And uh, we were very, very happy that uh, um, three important countries, Capo Verde, Argentina, and Morocco, uh, were able to participate to this alliance through administrative arrangements. I would be uh, very, very happy when uh, we will sign the Washington Declaration later in July to see that uh, the participation of these three important strategic partners will be formalized in the All Atlantic Ocean Alliance as uh, the other uh, founding members. And of course, uh, um, when I said that uh, this is very important from the point of view of science diplomacy, it is also important for me to say that the work that we have done on this All Atlantic Ocean cooperation has been for us, for the European Commission, really a source of inspiration. Uh, many of you might be aware that we have adopted a new strategy for international cooperation last year, the global approach to research and innovation, which really sets the path for the action in terms of uh, uh, international cooperation in research and innovation for the future, for the duration of the next framework program, the Horizon Europe program, which was launched last year, but also beyond that, it is very much based on the promotion and the respect of values and principles in international cooperation and the dramatic situation that we are going through now with the, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine showed how important it is that in each policy that we carry out, we do have a framework which puts at the first place our values. And in fact, uh, when we were uh, discussing uh, and uh, drafting uh, what was then adopted uh, as the new strategy for international cooperation, we were really looking at what was done with the whole Atlantic Ocean cooperation, uh, what was built, and how important it uh, is in order to move ahead, in order to promote our international cooperation in research innovation, to construct multilateral alliances between key par amongst key partners in order to deal together uh, the key societal challenges that we are living in the world. So I would like to thank you all because not only you're doing a great job, but you gave us the inspiration for building up the new strategy on international cooperation. I, I don't want to be long because we are already running out of time, but I would like to say that uh, for me, it would be really important that uh, this work that, uh, that, we, that we, are, we have done um, now sees uh, a new a new light uh, with the Washington uh, uh, event and uh, the, to be signed declaration. I do hope that uh, also the other Caribbean countries uh, could join in a more formalized way this, uh, this uh, All Atlantic Ocean Alliance. And uh, I, um, I would like to say that uh, you um, certainly uh, have to be really proud of what you, you have achieved and uh, you can uh, really count on us from the International Cooperation uh, Department to continue to support this uh, fantastic endeavor that uh, you're, carrying, uh, you're carrying out. Uh, a special thanks uh, for me to um, our ex-colleague uh, Sigi Grub, who is, is an ex-colleague, but she's still there doing a lot of work for this All Atlantic Ocean Alliance. Thank you, Sigi. Thanks to all of you and looking forward to hopefully see many of you 
in Washington in presence. So that would be very nice after all this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria Cristina. It's always nice to hear from you. And I'm very glad that I'm going to meet you in, in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much. And I give the floor now to uh, Gil uh, Gilbert Sico, Department of Science and Innovation, Director for Marine and Polar Research, uh, Palau Science, Belen Co Chair, uh, Representative from South Africa. Uh, Dr. Gilbert, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, thank you, the Belém coaches and Galois coaches, and a good day to everyone. I would also like to thank our South African Embassy uh, that is represented here today uh, through our Economic Council, Cecilia Iturale. All I can say is, wow, <laughs> this has been a very long road of hard work towards success. What we've witnessed here at this meeting is an indication that collaborations do work. Uh, excuse me. Uh, that collaborations do work uh, quite a lot uh, in attaining uh, key initiatives that we are here uh, being engaged in. Uh, for me, this brings back a lot of fond memories of when we were first engaged uh, uh, together with Brazil uh, to join the All Atlantic uh, Alliance uh, back in 2016, where we Together with Brazil, I think uh, Janice was there, uh, uh, together with uh, some other colleagues, where we then started to think, uh, okay, fine, how do we participate in this uh, engaging and, and very interesting partnership? So it was clear to us that we needed first to establish an agenda, a South Atlantic agenda. Uh, we then started, uh, we had our first meeting in Brasilia, uh, where we met with colleagues from, from Argentina and in South, South Africa, we brought in our, uh, our other African partners like Namibia and, and Angola. And then we started basically working on that. And that actually led ultimately to the first, actually, the all, the, this All Atlantic uh, Research Forum was the first one was actually hosted by Brazil uh, back then. When then we decided to say, okay, fine, well, let's bring in the other researchers, I mean, so that the researchers could caught, them, caught each other to see and present what other elements uh, that they can collaborate on. And of course, uh, that brought in good, uh, good memories because uh, even as we speak, there's a, there's a French vessel uh, that is sailing in the Southern Atlantic with South African researchers that are basically doing work, exploring research, uh, to advance the, the Belém statement. And actually sometime in, in January, uh, we also hosted uh, international researchers on our vessel SAR Galas, we see in the Southern Ocean, uh, to try and also explore uh, how the, the, uh, the work that to advance the, the aspirations of the Belém statement. So I'm very, very much happy. I think a lot of happened. I mean, this brings us to a state that we are very much excited. Uh, as we speak, that now we are moving forward. As it was indicated earlier on by Jim Bell, I mean, we also doing a lot of work uh, that is uh, led by Sophia through Anchor. Uh, so many people are very, very much uh, excited about what's coming up. Uh, in terms of uh, what the aspirations of the All Atlantic are intended to do. Uh, later in Washington, as it was also indicated, uh, a lot of commitments, new commitments, I think, will come up. Uh, this is built on a lot of work uh, that, is, that is, we've been working on over the years. For example, the, the work proposed here uh, over the past few days will surely build on the Atlant All Atlantic Ocean North and South uh, that intends to advance the shared vision of the Atlantic Ocean that is re healthy, resilient, clean, safe, transparent, predictable, productive, understood, treasured, so as to promote the well being, prosperity, and security uh, of present and future generations. The excellent work that has been done will culminate further, as I indicated, into that contribute immensely 
into the, uh, the declarations that will be signed later in July. Well, I'm very hopeful that we will achieve a lot more through this commitment. I also like to thank again, once again, the scientists that committed uh, during this past few days and made us so hopeful that will contribute to us, mainly because we have seen, I mean, late, I mean, sometime a few years ago, I mean, the, in 2020, uh, just uh, two years ago, the IOC, the Governmental Oceanographic Commission, uh, released the Global Ocean Science Report, which shows that there are quite a lot of disparities among the different nations in the ocean space. So this went, um, for me, as from someone who was working from Africa, where Africa, Africans basically, the, 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 the report indicated that quite less and less of, of, of scientists are participating, particularly at the, at, the, at the development stage where young researchers are not necessarily participating in international meetings. Few of them are participating in international meetings. And then with this, the IOIA, which brought, brought in a lot of young researchers from South Africa, and also we're hoping it will expand, bring, show other young researchers that you can easily participate in huge platforms like that. So nationally, as we speak from in the South African space, we are also currently developing policies uh, that will ensure that basically we commit resources towards ocean sciences that will help our scientists to equally uh, participate and engage with their international counterparts. So we are engaging, envisaging a new dimensions in the work that will be discussed. I think that will be finalized in Washington. So ensuring that we we grow the space. I mean, all the achievements that have been that have been gained, all the attractions that have been gained through through the Belém statement and later through the the uh, and, and later through the work of the anchor, which uh, was purely to ensure that we coordinate the the Atlantic research work of the All Atlantic, basically to expand the All Atlantic and to what we are seeing uh, being culminating in, in that will be signed in Washington. I'm very hopeful. And uh, we wish everyone a very good success. So that ultimately, when we meet in Washington, a lot of new things and great things are going to come out of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert, uh, for the inspiring words and the possibility of all this collaboration uh, between us. Thank you very much. And I give the floor now uh, to David Mori, uh, Director General for Strategic, Strategic and Regulatory Science, Fisheries and Oceans uh, from Canada on behalf of the Geldway Co-Chairs Canada. Uh, Dr. David, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, good morning, good afternoon. I'm joining you today from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, which is located on the unceded territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. On behalf of all my colleagues at Fisheries and Oceans Canada, I would like to start by thanking our co-hosts of the 2022 All-Atlantic Forum, uh, Brazil and the United States of America, thank you. I'd also like to thank the US ambas ambassadors who joined us this past week, as well as to extend thanks to all participants who contributed to this success. It really is a privilege to be here with you today and to hear your very inspiring statements. We're united by a shared commitment to our oceans, and I'm pleased to see such a high degree of transatlantic cooperation for the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance. I look forward to Canada furthering its contributions to ocean science by enhancing our existing partnership and by forging new ones, all Atlantic partners, to advance the work and challenges that were discussed this week. As a signatory to the Galway Statement on Atlantic Ocean Cooperation, Canada has a long-standing tradition of working with the Atlantic Ocean community on a wide variety of marine issues, and we actively contribute to coordinated global responses. Reflecting on this week's discussion, we've had many collective successes. For example, we brought the importance of ocean literacy to the forefront. We showcased the impacts of ocean plastics on marine ecosystems and species. 
We defined scientific models to assess priority aquaculture issues. We advanced a framework for marine microbiome science, and we un increased our understanding of ocean ecosystems through the development and application of innovative tools and technologies. Although we have made much collective progress in these areas over the past many years, there is still much more to discover about our ocean, and there are so many other issues to resolve together. And while the COVID-19 pandemic has underscored our vulnerabilities, it also offers us a chance to help shape a new path towards a more resilient, healthy, and sustainable ocean. Canada is proud to be a leader in marine conservation and biodiversity, tackling marine plastics, improving our understanding of the ocean climate nexus, and advancing a sustainable ocean economy. Canada is committed to advancing progress under the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. As a proud member of the Ocean Decade Alliance, we aim to work cooperatively with our international partners to advance innovative and transformative science that will support a healthy and sustainable ocean. We're also determined to harness the power of our oceans through the implementation of Canada's Blue Economy Strategy and by working with like-minded nations to implement the priority actions of the high-level panel for a sustainable ocean economy. To achieve these objectives, we need to look beyond our borders to share information, data, and research opportunities as well as outcomes. We need to seek out opportunities to learn from one another and to share best practices. We need to build a knowledge base that is more diverse, more inclusive, and also much more equitable. The All Atlantic Research and Innovation Alliance will help turn these words into action. In closing, on behalf of Canada, we are looking forward to working with all our All Atlantic partners to develop innovative ocean science solutions to support a sustainable, healthy, and ocean for future generations. We're looking forward to seeing everyone in Washington. Thanks again to our co-hosts and to those who took time to participate in discussions this week. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Dr. David, for your uh, words. And I now give the floor to Karina Pombo, uh, National Director of Promotion and the Scientific po Policy, International Affairs, Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation, MINSIT, All Atlantic High Level Board Observer, uh, Argentina. Uh, Karina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Marcelo. It's a pleasure stay here today good morning good evening to all the attendees at the scientific event of the all atlantic ocean research forum 2022 being held today in brasilia i would like to thank the host and organizer for the invitation to the authorities of the ministry of science technology and innovation of the argentine republic we are happy to be part of this high level event that raises awareness about the fundamental value of the Atlantic Ocean for human health and well being, the preservation of natural species and ecosystems, the regulation of climate, and as a great source of natural resources. I should like to emphasize that this forum brings together not only the authorities from various countries, but also young academics, researchers, entrepreneurs, youth ambassadors, and the civil society from across the Atlantic Ocean. This shows the multilateral interest in further strengthening the research community in connection with this topic. Our ministry wishes to highlight the multilateral efforts that progressively lay the basis for this fruitful collaboration that has resulted in several previous statements and the establishment of the South-South 
framework for scientific and technical cooperation in the South and Tropical Atlantic and the Southern Ocean. Today, they allow us to further develop South-North links by promoting the cooperation in ocean sciences. This foundation allows Argentina, Brazil, South Africa, Canada, United States, Cabo Verde, Morocco, and the European, European Union to agree on a new declaration on the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance that will sign in July in Washington, D.C. The new declaration will allow us to work supporting the sustainable development of the Atlantic Ocean by establishing a long-term All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance following the motto, connecting, cooperating, acting, to share knowledge, infrastructure, and capacity by promoting innovative and transformative outcome-oriented science. This forum are important for our country because we have one of the longest coastlines of the South Atlantic and the coastal preservation and research is one of our national national priority. Our Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation set out to address so social, productive and scientific technological problems as a national challenge. One of our main goals is to strengthen maritime research, sovereignty and the sustainable use of the Reserves in both the South Atlantic and the Argentine Sea by means of the systematic exploration and sustainable management of Argentine maritime resources. The priorities of our ministry are to gain a better understanding of the marine environment and ensure the sustainable use of its resources as well as to implement technological innovation in the industry of the Argentina Sea. To that end, the Argentine government has been working for a number of years on an interministerial ministerial initiative called Pampasul. This initiative coordinates scientific research, technological development, and innovation actions and seeks to advance research, development, and innovation contributing to the national security and so sovereignty and to social, social, economic, and environmentally sustainable development with a focus on technological innovation, centric social inclusion, the protection of natural marine resources, and integration of marine and coastal environments. Pampasul also seeks to promote capacity building in connected scientific discipline and technological areas in order to develop public policy for the effective, effective management and preservation with a federal perspective. We also want to highlight the great effort made to finalize the future All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Declaration. This declaration will help to increase our understanding of the relationship between ocean and climate and to develop outcome-oriented science for a mitigating and adapting to its consequences protect and restore marine ecosystem and biodiversity, thus enhancing their re resilience and potential for the adaptation to climate change and other natural and human-made resources, address the impact of marine pollution, including plastic or marine species and ecosystem, among other subjects for cooperation. We hope that this event succeeds in bringing to the spotlight the late, latest achievement, a new initiative connected with the Atlantic Ocean and in providing concrete solutions to the challenges 
space by the Atlantic. Once again, I thank the host, organizer, and participant, my dear colleagues, Cristina, John, Gilbert, Sofia, Francisco, and of course, from the authorities from Brazil, Vice Minister Morales and Zaira Turchi. Thank you very much from multiple countries for their, their time and interest in reinforcing the importance of engaging with complementary initiative and action for a healthy and sustainable Atlantic Ocean for everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karina, for your words. And I'm very glad to, uh, to work together with, the, with Argentina and all the countries together here uh, in all Atlantic. Um, now I give the floor to Malik Lopes, Instituto do Mar, President of All Atlantic High Level Board Observer, Cabo Verde. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, so, uh, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is uh, Malik uh, Lopez, and I am the president of the Sea Institute of Cabo Verde, uh, responsible for promoting and coordinating marine applied uh, research and technological development, uh, which involves uh, the transfer of knowledge, innovation in, in the ocean domain in all its resources. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank the All Atlantic Ocean Research uh, Forum organizer, uh, organizers uh, for this invitation and also congratulate everyone involved in the work uh, in the achievements as well that has funneled into today's uh, very interesting uh, scientific dialogue uh, that will lead eventually to the ministerial event in Washington. Sorry, for Cabo Verde, it's extremely important uh, to be an engaged partner uh, in the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance and, and also uh, um, as a high level uh, board uh, observer. Um, the core values and the vision of the Alliance are strongly uh, aligned with those of Cabo Verde's ocean uh, agenda. Uh, as we all know, nature and science uh, have already uh, showed us uh, clearly uh, and forcefully that if we don't uh, urgently change the way we interact with the ocean in the future, we will be uh, unable to enjoy a healthy cycle in, a, in, in an ecosystem that uh, sustainably favors fisheries and food security, uh, tourism, ecotourism, uh, the shipping industry, uh, the resilience of our coastal cities, the climate stability, and all the economic production that come uh, from these activities. Um, if you allow me to, to, to say that uh, the challenges are many for, for Cabo Verde as a sits uh, country in a large ocean state, uh, namely the, the sea level rise in the marine litter, uh, also overfishing uh, as it would uh, affect uh, the coastal areas and the resident population. Uh, uh, as well, the, the, uh, the habitat, the biodiversity, uh, tourism in, in, the, in the whole coastal infrastructure. So uh, uh, moreover, the, re the rise in uh, seawater temperatures uh, in ocean acidification are impacting the ecosystems on which um, the islands depend for, for food and, and economic um, development. Therefore, uh, I highlight cooperation in, in, the, in, in, in the strong international scientific alliance that is essential for both understanding the underlying agents um, that cause these impacts, but also um, to search for a quick and efficient uh, solution to address the ocean's health uh, restoration. Um, aware of the alarming oceanic problems that afflict all nations of the world, several approaches in, in public policies have been, um, have been undertaken by the Cabo Verdean uh, government. So there is a serious commitment uh, to address marine preservation and sustainable use of marine uh, resources. And within such measures, uh, the Ministry of the Sea uh, was created in 2018 
in, in a, 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 with a, an ambitious agenda of sustainable blue, uh, blue growth, uh, starting which begins the process of a, a of a transition of Cabo Verde to a sustainable blue economy, where st strategic planning and, and uh, promoting uh, instruments have been elaborated in, um, and that are now in the implementation phase. Uh, moreover, uh, a C campus has been created to train staff to work in various uh, areas linked uh, to the maritime sector with view to providing uh, high level services in, and uh, also internationalization. This will allow the development um, of research in, in the areas of the sea, uh, fisheries, maritime transport technologies and climate change uh, in order to take advantages of, of synergies in, in different potentials. Nevertheless, the creation of a, of a maritime special economic zone uh, in the island of São Vicente uh, that aims to transform Cabo Verde into a sustainable maritime and logistics platform. Um, also as an opportunity to change course, Cabo Verde has invested heavily in its economic uh, uh, development uh, to promote sustainability of marine resources with important commitments, such as to protect 30% of the world's ocean by joining uh, the Global Ocean Alliance, also to expand Cabo Verde's MPA's marine protected areas and implement uh, monitor, uh, monitoring me mechanisms to manage current and future MPAs in accordance to our uh, nationally determined contribution. Um, we, we have also implemented a, a blue economy strategy to diversify uh, national revenues and strengthen the, the sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth and to improve livelihoods and jobs. Um, all of this uh, and also to, to develop uh, joint initiatives uh, focused on ocean sustainability uh, through the establishment of multilateral cooperation protocols to express uh, on the protection, the promotion, and to enhance the ocean's natural capital, amongst other efforts. Uh, so all of this to show how, uh, on the national level, uh, our, our, uh, our ocean agenda is aligned with that of, uh, of the international ocean agenda and the uh, all Atlantic ocean research vision as well. Um, so the need to rely on science uh, and research for better decision making is very clear here for us. Uh, Cabo Verde with, with its policies and the, and the scientific community commits uh, to this alliance and partnership, um, sending a message for a growing alliance and even, even stronger uh, cooperation that is needed. Um, it has been a great event uh, with fruitful exchange of uh, knowledge and expertise, and uh, we are thankful for that. Uh, I could go on, uh, 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 but uh, as I know, we are ahead of time. So I would only reiterate uh, my congratulations to the All Atlantic Ocean Research Organization and all the participants uh, here today uh, and reinforce uh, Cabo Verde's close partnership uh, to support uh, and support in this extremely important ocean scientific agenda that connects us all, as well as our presence at uh, uh, Washington's high level event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Malik, uh, for your words and the important contribution of Cabo Verde. Thank you very much. And now I give the, the floor to Bushata Emoni, president of the Abdamalek Isadi University of uh, Titua Atlantic High Level Board, observed from Marrocos. Dr. Bouchat, the floor is yours. Dr. Uh, Dr. Bouchat, we cannot hear you. Secretary, I'm not, I'm not sure if he's uh, online. I'm not seeing him in the, uh, in the participant list. Ah, okay. Well, well, if he's not present, I thank you all for the participation. 
and uh, all the contributions from different countries and it is really very important our engagement in this alliance and thank you very much uh, for all the speeches. And uh, Sophia, now what we the, the floor is yours. Thank you very thank much, you. Secretary. So now we are moving to the session, to another session, and I kindly ask you once again to turn on your cameras for another great picture uh, of the group. So while the technicians are taking um, the picture, so as you know, we are reaching the end of this very interesting And I would really like to welcome all of you to the closing session, which where we will hear pictures the from the two institutional partners of this community, with high-level representatives of the prison in Brasilia that we are seeing now on the screen. Mr. Marcelo Morales, to multiple What is your again, Secretary? Thank you, Sophia, uh, for uh, for all your support. And now we are in the closed session that involves key institutional partners of the Alliance with the participation of, of high-level representatives of the Alliance present in Brasilia, uh, conveying key messages for the future of the Alliance. And we will now... Uh, uh, start this session and I would like to, I'm very happy to give the floor for our first uh, first uh, speaker is Dr. Luis Piedmont, uh, Second Secretary and Trade Commissioner, Embassy of Canada in Brazil. Good afternoon, bon après-midi. Boa tarde a todas e a todos. Um, <clears throat> it is a pleasure to be here um, with you today to participate in this closing session of the scientific and technical portion of the 2022 All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Forum. I would like to start by thanking our hosts, uh, Brazil and the United States, for bringing us together for what has been a very productive platform to discuss. Atlantic research, Atlantic Ocean research projects and scientific initiatives. To identify opportunities to enhance existing collaboration and to forge new potential partnerships. The pandemic has impacted all of us in significant ways, forcing us to change how we conduct our lives, business and scientific projects and missions. However, COVID-19 has also provided us an opportunity to reflect, to innovate, and to overcome. We need to bring those attributes of resiliency, innovation, and perseverance to tackle the challenges faced by the world's oceans. Sea level rise, plastics, ocean acidification, extreme weather events, and other stressors are all impacting the health and productivity of our ocean which in turn influence the health and safety of our economies. <clears throat> we must move forward in a collaborative, coordinated and integrated way if we are to address the magnitude of these challenges. Canada is committed to international science efforts and multilateral ocean science initiatives that support sustainable ocean practices. The area of focus identified by the all Atlantic community reflects our Canadian priorities. To support the implementation of the Ocean Plastics Charter, Canada will finalize the disbursement of the 100 million Marine Letter Mitigation Fund this year that was launched as part of the Charlevoix Blueprint uh, for health, healthy oceans, seas, and resilient coastal communities. Canada will also renew the, our Ghost Gear Fund for $10 million until March 2023 to continue to support projects which focus on ghost gear retrieval, disposal of fishing related plastic waste, testing new fishing technology, supporting international efforts to remove ghost gear from our oceans. 
We're a strong supporter of the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development and a proud member of the Ocean Decade Alliance, which is an essential effort in helping achieve Agenda 2030 and to ensuring a healthy and productive ocean for future generations. Further, we are dedicated to advancing progress towards a global ocean observing system and to increasing the availability of ocean science data to better understand the ocean climate nexus. The only way we will achieve success on these ocean initiatives and many others is through international cooperation. The Galway Statement on Atlantic Ocean Cooperation has established a proven and successful framework to advance scientific cooperation. We intend to continue to strengthen our Galway Statement partnership with the United Nations, with the, pardon me, with the United States and the European Union, while taking into account collaborative science efforts occurring through the all Atlantic Ocean community. A broad theme overlaying all these activities is Canada's commitment to advancing equity in ocean science and to work in partnership with Indigenous peoples. We're working nationally to advance reconciliation and look forward to collaborating with Indigenous partners in the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance in the future. We're also working with our international partners at all levels to promote and support activities that aim to increase inclusivity in ocean science and to empower and inspire women, girls, and youth more broadly. We're particularly pleased to support the All Atlantic Youth Ambassador Program, and we are proud of the contributions our ambassadors are making to support the All Atlantic effort and beyond. Through the initiatives mentioned, Canada will continue to work with all members of the Atlantic Ocean community to make progress towards ensuring sustainable global ocean economy. Together, we can deliver the scientific knowledge, technologies, and capacity to arrive at innovative solutions that will support open access and open ocean data and information. This in turn will support the sustainable development of our ocean resources while at the same time reversing the decline in ocean health. This success depends on the alignment and leveraging of cooperative ocean research. We can do so much together, so much more together than we can achieve on our own. In closing, I would like to thank you all for taking the time to participate in this forum and Canada looks forward to advancing our partnership further at the event in Washington in July. Thanks. Thank you, Luis, for your words. And now I give the floor to Pablo Antonio uh, de Angelis, Chagre de la Frere, uh, the Embassy of Argentina to Brazil. In primer lugar, quisiera transmitir el agradecimiento y para venizar a Desculpa. Eh, ao ministro Paulo Alvin, ao secretario Marcelo Morales, por organizar este evento de fundamental importancia para el avance de nuestro trabajo científico y cooperativo para la discusión sobre las perspectivas futuras de cooperación. También agradezco a los Estados Unidos, que será anfitrión en julio próximo, y a la Comisión Europea por su colaboración en la organización. La República Argentina, en su carácter de país bicontinental y con uno de los litorales marítimos más extensos del mundo, considera auspicioso este evento, como así también la participación en la declaración final que se firmará en Washington en julio próximo. Los océanos tienen un rol central en el desarrollo sostenible, son de suma importancia para las economías en desarrollo y ofrecen una respuesta al cambio climático. A los fines de preservar sus recursos es indispensable disponer de información sobre ellos. 
En este sentido, el rol del conocimiento y de la investigación científica marina es vital, razón por la cual es altamente positiva la cooperación y el intercambio de conocimiento. La República Argentina está llevando a cabo numerosas políticas públicas que muestran su compromiso con la conservación y el uso sostenible de los océanos y sus recursos para el desarrollo humano, entre las que se destacan fundamentalmente tres, la iniciativa Pampa Azul, la cooperación internacional para la investigación científica marina y el sistema de áreas protegidas, áreas marinas protegidas. La iniciativa Pampa Azul, la Argentina lanzó la iniciativa Pampa Azul en 2014, una iniciativa estratégica y multidisciplinaria que reúne a las autoridades de siete ministerios con la comunidad científica nacional y otros actores relevantes. Dicha iniciativa está dirigida a promover el conocimiento científico, impulsar innovaciones tecnológicas que contribuyan al fortalecimiento de las industrias vinculadas al mar y al desarrollo económico de las regiones marítimas argentinas, entre otros propósitos. Asimismo, Pampa Azul incluye un eje transversal para el empoderamiento de la mujer en las ciencias, particularmente en materia oceánica, con vistas a que el desarrollo y el conocimiento vayan de la mano de políticas integradoras e inclusivas. La iniciativa también promueve una toma de conciencia mayor en la sociedad sobre su patrimonio oceánico y el uso sostenible de sus vastos recursos. En este sentido, colabora con el programa educativo Escuelas Azules, que busca promover proyectos escolares que generen nuevas experiencias de aprendizaje sobre la conservación y utilización sostenible del océano, sus mares y sus recursos. La segunda iniciativa es la cooperación internacional para la investigación científica marina. La Argentina está convencida de que la cooperación binacional, multinacional, triangular y la cooperación sur-sur son un camino necesario para avanzar en el conocimiento científico que sirva de base para la toma de decisiones de cara a la protección de los océanos en el marco del desarrollo sostenible. Ello contribuye a complementar las capacidades entre los países y reducir las brechas de recursos para realizar actividades científicas. En tal sentido, nuestro país trabaja conjuntamente con otros países y con entidades científicas y académicas en proyectos donde cada parte aporta sus conocimientos y capacidades específicas para mejorar el conocimiento común sobre los océanos. Las limitaciones que ha impuesto la pandemia de COVID-19 no han detenido la actividad científica en el Atlántico Sur. Se continuó el trabajo de investigación, análisis, capacitación y desarrollo tecnológico. Se incorporaron nuevas herramientas, incluyendo embarcaciones de investigación para institutos científicos nacionales y continuó la participación de nuestros expertos en distintos foros internacionales y regionales en la materia. Quisiera destacar la elección de la Argentina como sede de un nuevo centro especializado de ciencias oceánicas de la UNESCO. La creación de este centro, dedicado al desarrollo de capacidades y la formación en materia de ciencias oceánicas de los países de la región, se condice con el papel activo de la Argentina en materia de conservación y uso sostenible de los océanos y contribuye a la implementación de los objetivos de la década de las ciencias oceánicas. En último lugar, el sistema de áreas marinas protegidas, 
la Argentina tiene un firme compromiso en la conservación y el uso sustentable de los recursos marinos. Un ejemplo claro de ello es el trabajo conjunto y el compromiso interinstitucional en la creación e implementación del Sistema Nacional de Áreas Marinas Protegidas. La creación y adecuación del Sistema Nacional de Áreas Marinas Protegidas de tres nuevas áreas, Namuncurá, Banco Burgut, Yaganes y Namuncurá, Banco Burgut II, permitió aumentar significativamente el conocimiento de estos espacios marinos estratégicos a través de 16 campañas de investigación nacionales y de la creación de un geoportal para sistematizar la información. Integrado al portal de servicio de hidrografía naval que permite visualizar estaciones de muestreo, informes de campaña y artes de muestreo, entre otros. Este sistema es pionero en la promoción de las pesquerías sustentables con un enfoque ecosistémico. Finalmente, espero que el evento de alto nivel en julio próximo sea realmente exitoso y logremos una declaración que marque el camino de cooperación para el desarrollo sostenible de nuestros océanos. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, embajador, por sus palabras. Y es muy close to what we are doing. I'm very glad to hear all the initiative from Argentina uh, in science, technology, and conservation. Sustainability is re really very important. Thank you very much. And we have a lot to collaborate. And now I give the floor to Cecilia Etunarabi, Iturrade. Shajid Affair, Economic Counselors, Embassy of South Africa uh, to Brazil. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Program Director Secretary Marcelo uh, Morales, Your Excellency, Senor Ministro uh, Alvim, to ambassadors here present, ministers, representatives from various countries, councils and governments, uh, Dr. Sico, uh, the youth ambassadors and all the presenters so my presentation comes or my deliberation will be one based as someone who is a non-scientist so i want to just emphasize that in africa alone we have close to 30 countries that have the atlantic ocean as their border and south africa of course is a peninsula we are bordered by both the indian and atlantic but of course alongside um, the african countries we have the european north american central american south american countries Hence, we cannot deny that the versatility of this blue mass is indeed crucial to us all. We are all held together and are interconnected by the Atlantic Ocean in a relationship that is based on our affinity in common interests, such as in scientific endeavors, in marine research, in innovation, to tackle also illicit activities, to develop technologies, address job creation, and thereby to benefit from it as a community. I came across this quotation from one of South Africa's youth ambassadors, Ms. Tando Mazomba, and she said, I quote, people hold multiple relationships with the ocean, and these might differ from person to person, but what is important is to acknowledge that all these relationships are equally important. So let's bear this in mind and keep this in mind when discussions arise. So I've spoken about Ms. Tando Mazomba, and I want to come back to this issue, which is uh, a UN discussion on age in our various parts of the world. The median age in Africa is 19.7. For our colleagues and uh, representatives from Europe, you are in the upper 42.5. In uh, the region, eh, señor encargado de negocios de la Argentina, la edad media, 31.5. Brazil, 33.5. USA, 38.5. I represent Africa, the youth. So whereas the north has been, uh, uh, the population in the north has gotten older, 
the uh, population in Africa has gotten younger. So it brings me to this next point. I want to congratulate the visionary leaders who opened an avenue to include the youth in this alliance. The Youth Ambassadors Network has undeniably an important role to play, raising awareness on the value of the ocean, spreading conservation initiatives, being active role players, reaching out to their communities. I read the bio of some of our youth ambassadors, and I really was inspired and filled with hope. And after listening to some of the presentations by the other youth ambassadors in this forum uh, who took the floor, I'm convinced that their passion and knowledge and drive to improve the environment and also to ensure that the ambitious mandate of the Alliance are met is really going to be impactful and meaningful. As I said to you, I'm not a researcher, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a water specialist. So I looked up Atlantic Ocean and I said, how deep is it? At its deepest, it is 8,486 meters. On average, 3,646. Now, for those of us who understand uh, construction, and if we were to put the Alliance as a construction project, we would probably have all our engineers being obliged to dig very deep foundations in order to ensure that the structure that was being built up would be solid and sound, shockproof. So whilst I think that the Youth Ambassadors Network is a magnificent initiative, I think that we need to bring more young people on board. Not only those who are privileged enough to be at university, but to those from our African continent with a median age of 19.7, uh, from grassroots levels. Let us give those that do not have access to formal tertiary education a role in society, a purpose early in life. This group could then be the one that digs mm -hmm. deeper into these foundations, reaching out and educating school children, fishermen, households, coastal communities at large. Getting the youth involved in the Alliance and its aspirations is vital. After all, it is a source of livelihood for so many of them, and for some, it is their only hope. We also have to reflect that 50 years ago, the Stockholm Conference on the Human Environment determined that harming the environment harms development and causes poverty. And so how poverty reduction is key to addressing environmental harm. Hence, the deeper these foundations, the greater involvement of communities, the deeper the understanding that the health of the economy is dependent on the health of this ocean that binds us. Another reason to invest in such deep foundations is because the amount of plastic waste that contaminates the Atlantic Ocean has been massively underestimated. It's revealed that the At Atlantic Ocean holds at 10 times more plastic waste than initially anticipated. Whilst research estimate, researchers estimate that total plastic load amounts to 200 million tons. Please jot down this figure, 200 million tons. Added to this visually unimaginable figure are invisible microplastics that float 200 meters under the waves. Now imagine the invisible pollution, not just the visible pollution and the harm that this may cause, not only mankind, but marine life as well. So how do you visualize and put this 200 million tons into a visual understanding? So I looked up, as you can see, I've done a lot of homework for this uh, presentation. A blue whale, which is considered to be the largest uh, creature alive, can measure up to 33 meters in length, and it weighs only 200 tons. Now, a blue whale, for those... Uh, from the African continent can also be equivalent to 33 elephants. To give you another idea is a blue whale, its heart is the size of the iconic Volkswagen Beetle. So if we quantify this visual size of the animals, we have to multiply that by a million to get the amount of plastic waste that currently contaminates the Atlantic Ocean. So, the idea is that if these coastal communities at grassroots level or the people on the ground are able to understand what this means to them, they would be your most vocal activists in the fight 
to preserve the Atlantic Ocean as pure and as sustainable as possible. Then it brings me to another tier in this construction project, the people we need for the ocean we want. So these indeed are the scientists and the researchers. And of course, we rely heavily on their expertise to determine the impact of such contaminants on human health, on marine life, to quantify the ecological impacts of oil spills, the impacts of trade routes, of plastic pollution, of noise pollution, on the well-being of marine species and on food security. But also we rely on them to find opportunities for jobs for the million of people that are currently unemployed. Now, of course, we have to rely on the scientists and researchers because they are the ones that guide us in our blue and green endeavors, as these two indeed are greatly intertwined. Researchers, you, pro you provide us with data, with measurable, quantifiable, impactful data, which we need in order to wake up from this slumber and act. Your research findings provide guidance to policy makers in our various respective countries. Please know that your work is highly appreciated and valued. And we hope that you will inspire the youth to follow your footsteps. And we hope also that the collaborative projects that are currently in the pipeline may provide much food for thought. But I also want to congratulate my host country, Brazil, because I visited the island Fernando de Noronha. Uh, this is an island that is a protected national marine park and an ecological sanctuary with diverse ecosystems. So what did I find? I found that they have implemented checks and balances to ensure that this sanctuary is not destroyed by the many visitors that visit its shores. There are total conservation endeavors involving the public on the beachfront. There are beach guardians, there are guides, these are people who ensure that the TikTokers and the sort of social bloggers uh, don't touch protected species, don't step on protected corals. There's also cost benefit, sanctions, I would imagine, penalties for non-compliance. Because when you look at any formula that has got checks and balances and a cost benefit analysis, you will find that society acts with a, in a most graceful way. What I noted was the respect for authority, for nature, for the habitat in this island, which were truly admirable. And it's no wonder that then visitors are rewarded being able to swim freely among sea turtles, uh, amongst what some people would call friendly sharks and fierce looking barracudas, admiring the spinner dolphins performing their pirouettes in mid, in mid air. But the ocean is also not just a habitat for those creatures underwater, but also a wide variety of bird life and also a major source for job creation. So just from the example of Fernando de Noronha, we are able to see that research uh, endeavors can take place, conservation endeavors can take place, job creation, vibrant tourism and education, which is offered to all. That is a win-win solution. It clearly shows it is possible. Well, in conclusion, I want to congratulate Brazil on hosting this very informative scientific forum. I want to wish all the participants uh, uh, in the USA in particular for the prosperous ministerial event coming in July. To those who manage and supervise our various countries' ocean initiatives, to those who are responsible for implementing those checks and balances, to those who are responsible for the training exercises and for mentoring the youth, I would like to remind you of one of Nelson Mandela's most powerful quotes. And it says, do not look the other way. Do not hesitate. Recognize that the world is hungry for action, not words. Act with courage and vision. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cecilia, to share your vision, especially in ocean uh, pollution and sustainability. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, now I give the floor to Nabil Ad, uh, Adigogi, Ambassador of Morocco to Brazil. Thank you very much. Obrigado. Thank you. Thank you, dear, Min dear Secretary. Dear Minister Paulo Alvim, dear Secretary Marcelo Morales, Excellencies, Ambassadors, Ignacio, all the ambassadors here, present, ladies and gentlemen, let me start by thanking the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation of Brazil for inviting the embassies based here in Brasilia to this event. 
I would like also to welcome the participation of the scientific community and the Youth Ambassador Network from all the countries bordering the Atlantic to this conference. Indeed, engaging the scientific community is a conducive step in the way to improve the knowledge on the Atlantic, to reach a common vision of the challenges and the opportunities that this space offers. But above all, and most of all, the involvement of the scientific community will certainly improve the awareness and the, the, and the ownership among all our countries about the opportunities and the challenges in this shared space. For the Kingdom of Morocco, the Atlantic is a strategic priority due to the ambitious Moroccan presence in West Coast Africa in many areas, due to our historical and strategical partnership with the United States of America, which grants Morocco since 2004 the status of non-NATO major ally, and also with European Union in the, in the framework of the maritime integrated policy, and also due to our promise, growing and promising partnership with Brazil on the area of food security and logistical connectivity. Morocco has 2,900 kilometers of maritime coast and has proceeded in 2020 to the delimitation of its maritime borders joined to the United Nations Commission on the limits of the continental shelf. Moreover, Morocco has a strong potential to develop its blue economy. To this end, the World Bank approved on 22nd of May 2020 a $350 million loan to finance Morocco's blue economy program, which aims to stimulate economic growth while improving the sustainability and resilience of natural resources. Greater potential remains untapped in aquaculture, sustainable tourism, and marine renewable energy. But today, Morocco's maritime coasts, like those of many other countries, are affected by two main challenges, climate change and security threats. Aware of the first fact, Morocco aims by engaging bilateral and multilateral initiatives with its international partners to preserve its marine areas and to guarantee a balance between development and preservation for a sustainable coastline. With regard to the security aspects, asymmetric threats are developing rapidly in the South Atlantic, especially mainly due to the vulnerability of security systems and to the lack of coordination among the countries bordering the Atlantic. Tourism, organized crime, maritime policy, illegal fishing, pollution of marine spaces, degradation of coastal ecosystems are on the rise. It is a matter to stress that more the demand for the Atlantic is growing for maritime logistics, fishing, activities, offshore energy exploitation, renewable energy installations, more the challenges are becoming persistent. In this regard, Morocco considers the momentum is opportune for the countries which are bordering the, the Atlantic to start an academic and scientific reflection in order to reach in the medium term a common vision that applies to the entire Atlantic area capable, capable of facilitating effective cooperation and joint coordination, which naturally presuppose a shared objective, secure, clean, and structured Atlantic. The objective is to foster the emergence of bi-continental platform with a view to make it a geopolitical space for dialogue, interaction, and cooperation. To conclude, the Kingdom of Morocco is delighted to attend the high-level high level event scheduled next, next July in Washington. And finally, I am sure that ideas exchanged during this, this seminar will lead to valuable insights for the, emergence, for the emergence of a new strategic identity for the Atlantic. I would like to thank once more the organizer to the, of this event, namely the Ministry of 
Science, Technology and Innovation of Brazil for bringing together researchers and institutional representatives to reflect on these important subjects. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ambassador, and I'm really glad to, to hear the words emphasizing the importance of scientific uh, cooperation uh, for all Atlantic. Thank you very much. And now I give the floor to uh, Douglas Conef, uh, Chargé de la Fe, the, the Embassy of the United States to Brazil. Thanks, Marcelo. Botarji, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to try and speak in English. It will be a challenge for me. <laughs> uh, first, I want to say thank you, uh, Ministro Paulo Alvim. Thank you, Secretary Marcelo Morales, for hosting this important event. Um, and thank you for the kind introduction. I have to say at the beginning uh, to my distinguished colleague from, from South Africa, thank you for pointing out the average, the average age of our populations. 38.5 uh, for the United States. So I still have a few more years to go before I get there. But I absolutely agree with you about our youth ambassadors and the importance of youth uh, in this effort and that we absolutely need to bring more of them uh, into this uh, initiative. So thank you for that. It's a pleasure to represent the United States in this All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Scientific Forum closing session. First, I'd like again to thank our Brazilian colleagues, as everyone has here, for hosting uh, this session. Your hard work and effort have resulted in a very successful session that's going to influence and enrich the work of the All-Atlantic Alliance for years to come. I'd also like to echo the sentiments uh, given in our opening remarks by uh, our Undersecretary for Commerce, for Oceans and Atmosphere, and our NOAA Administrator, Dr. Rick Spinrod, and NOAA Assistant Administrator for Oceanic and Atmospheric Research, Dr. Francisco Werner. This has been a truly historic undertaking, bringing the North and the South Atlantic together to address the needs of the scientific community. We've heard from experts on various topics that affect our coastal communities during the seven priority sessions, including ecosystem resilience, marine pollution, ocean research, exploration and literacy, sustainable fisheries, and climate mitigation. These perspectives remind us of the critical importance of integrating science with policy, science with policy to ensure that we're making uh, progress toward a climate ready nation and, and, and world. Only through acting collectively can we hope to achieve the ambitious goals and be benchmarks that we have set. So in that sense, I, I again wanna uh, congratulate Brazil on behalf of the United States for your ambitious climate commitments at COP26 and beyond. We encourage and we support Brazil's efforts now to implement those commitments as part of our shared climate goals, which should be based on a strong foundation of science. We've had the opportunity to discuss these topics during various cross-cutting sessions over these last few days. We focused on finding ways to achieve and improve uh, data, transparent and accessible data, oceanic infrastructure, stakeholder and societal engagement, and capacity building, to promote the sharing of knowledge uh, among generations. While this is the last day of the event, the forum does not end here. In July, as others have noted, these discussions will continue at the second part of the forum, the ministerial event in Washington, DC, uh, which the United States is co-hosting with Brazil. So our collaboration to host this event is a testament to the strong relationship of scientific collaboration between the United States and Brazil spanning health, energy, agriculture, and other fields. This alliance illustrates the benefits of a joint approach across the Atlantic to tackling challenges that not only affect the countries of the South Atlantic, but the North and South Atlantic, all of us. The alliance is based on a strong foundation of science, and that's reflected as we move forward to the ministerial in July. At that ministerial event, we'll build on the important conversations that have taken place here, uh, that began with our scientists and these ambitious goals to ensure a healthy and thriving Atlantic Ocean. We'll reflect on the events of the past few days and build on the accomplishments we have already achieved uh, and look forward to the future of this All-Atlantic cooperation. Again, representatives from the All-Atlantic Youth Ambassadors Program will share the significance of this cooperation for early career professionals and for future generations. Ministers will have the opportunity to speak about their country's commitments uh, to this alliance. There will be roundtable discussions on the seven priority areas that we've talked about here, 
that will give further voice to youth ambassadors, policymakers, NGOs, and you, our scientific community. So it's going to be an opportunity to share perspectives on both the challenges and the opportunities ahead and how we use these relationships uh, built during these events. The highlight of the ministerial event, of course, will be the signing of the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Declaration. The declaration will outline the vision of the All Atlantic and will build upon the collaboration between existing efforts, existing initiatives in the Atlantic Basin on ocean research and innovation. So on behalf of the United States, I would like to thank all of you for the extraordinary work achieved during these past three days. And I encourage all of you to either travel to or tune in uh, for the ministerial event in July. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. A lot of work to improve our scientific cooperation uh, with the United States, and I think uh, is a major goal. And thank you for the support during 2019. Oil spills, huge oil spills that we had in Brazil, especially the scientific, a scientific point of view to mitigate what the huge impact that we have, not only in the environment, but uh, the fishery in communities. Thank you very much. And now I give the floor to Ignacio Ibanez, uh, head of the delegation of the European Union to Brazil. Thank you, Ignacio. Muito obrigado, Marcelo. And I would like really to start uh, congratulating and, and thanking uh, the, our host, uh, the Brazil, represented today by the State Minister for Science, Technology and Innovation, Paulo Alvin, of course, also Marcelo Morales and uh, Maria Zarka, Zaire, Turkey, and of course, also the co host, uh, the, the US. Uh, Doug Douglas Conef, uh, represented here, but of course also all colleagues, uh, Nabil, Luis, uh, Pablo, and Cecilia, and all the, the participants. I would like also to compliment my colleagues uh, from the European uh, Commission who have participated today, Cristina Russo and John Bell. And luckily, because they have participated, I can make my intervention quite uh, short and leave the time to hear uh, the minister that we are, of course, looking forward to, to, to hear. I will go also from the old Europe. <laughs> I will go to uh, the comment also like uh, Cecilia, because I really uh, was very much impacted by the, the session with, uh, with the young diplomats. I think it was an excellent. All the sessions were very good, but this one was particularly uh, positive. And I think that, that there are several elements. I think the combination between the young but also the more expert uh, people who were representing, in this case, uh, the, the European Commission and Brazil, was a very good uh, debate. And I will extract uh, two, two elements. The first one is how uh, the young, but I would say also the expert ones, have insisted on the value, how important uh, uh, the values are. And I think uh, in this process that we are, on this uh, transition that we have to do, uh, following our agenda, our common agenda, which are the uh, SDGs uh, from, the, from the UN, we have really to base our work on the cooperation. It is true that this uh, cooperation, and in the case of the European Union, with our uh, uh, Green Deal, we know and we are already doing some efforts on, on uh, inside uh, Europe and with our uh, with our partner. But also, it's important. I think the, the the young people have been very positive on this side. Also, that uh, this transition gives us opportunities. It's not only uh, things that we have to change. Of course, we have to change many things. And to uh, and uh, uh, Cecilia has mentioned some of the of this element, be it plastic, but many others, there are also good opportunities. And I think this is something that in the, the, the All Ocean uh, Alliance, it's uh, something which is clear and we have to use. We have, of course, uh, changes to do in the area of energy, maritime transport, uh, in many other areas. So there are opportunities that we have to use. And the second uh, value, which was uh, very clear coming from young, from different regions, is the idea of the cooperation. And I think the cooperation, when you speak, uh, speaking especially about science, uh, by science uh, and, and between scientists, it was uh, very important. And I think this is a, a challenge uh, for us. I think in the case of this All Atlantic, we are coming from the Galway Declaration, which was the North. And after, of course, uh, we, we thought it was essential for, for all of us uh, to include the South. And this is what this, the Belen uh, Declaration is. And I was very happy to hear today how the message were very similar. And today also in our the last session, North, South, East, West, uh, young people, 
not so young people like myself uh, speaking about the same the same issue and moving on this uh, same direction. So we are of course very grateful for this session for all the effort because I know that to arrive here is not easy and I know that you have been working very very hard and it has always uh, today been an excellent uh, session. Of course we are looking forward to go to Washington be it uh, physically or through the net <laughs> being here in Brasilia. In my case probably it will be from here but of course to be there it's an important declaration that we have to uh, that we'll be able to 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 sign and I think the group that we are uh, here, we have to, to, to work to expand, to be uh, more around, uh, around the, the table. But of course, with the same uh, determination, the same values that we are defending and the same idea of cooperation. So thank you very much. Back to you, Marcelo. Thank you, Ambassador, for all your support and the support for, uh, from the European Commission not only in the field of uh, the all Atlantic Ocean research, but all the fields in, in science and technology in this cooperation. Thank you very much. And now I give the floor to the Excellency uh, Paulo Vim, Minister of the Brazilian uh, Science and Technology and Innovation, MCTI. Minister. Uh, good afternoon for all, and especially Ambassador Nabil, my friend, Ambassador Inácio, Douglas, Luiz, Pablo, <laughs> and Cecilia. In special, thanks my team, Marcelo, Zaira, Milano. Uh, as we close this event, and as we look forward to the sign of the All Atlantic, Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Declaration next month in Washington. It's very important for the planet. It's very, very important. I would like to remind ourselves that nothing we do here has an important contribution by the scientific community. It's very, very important. I have been impressed by the support shown by the community in participating in the a workshop in organized side events and being devoted and engaged across the Atlantic, south, south, east to east in Atlantic initiative. It's very, very contribution, cooperation and initiative. It's very, very important for protection of the planet. I'm sure the workshop will provide such valuable input and that can keep as policymakers busy for a while. We have to take this input at heart if we are the, to fulfill the upcoming declaration ambition of supporting the sustainable development of the Atlantic Ocean. Ocean is priority, Pablo, it's priority by sharing knowledge, infrastructure, and capacity and by promotion, innovative and transformative outcome oriented by science. Science oriented the new development is very, very important. When pandemic is demonstrates this. Today, we heard about our shared priorities, increasing our understand, uh, understanding of the relationship between the ocean and climate. The changing affects two points very important for us, for the planet. Monitoring protection and restoring mar marine ecosystem and biodiversity. Tackling the impacts of marine pollution, including plastics. Developing innovative outcome-oriented science to support sustainable fisheries and aquaculture. Coordinated Atlantic Ocean modeling, observing, and seabed mapping effort. Promotion of circular, sustainable, and including inclusive ocean economics. And finally, promotion ocean literacy and broadening overall engagement in ocean science and ocean sustainability. These are absolutely aligned with the United Nations Deck of Ocean. 
is very important that aligned with its expected results and pressing challenges at its must be, must be. It is one ocean and we will share it. And thus, it is also aligned with our own national implementation plan, Hour of the Day. Marcelo is the chief of this <laughs> action. We have heard also about some of the things we need to go forward about the need to promote accessible, interoperable, and transparent knowledge and data, to enhance access to end the sharing of ocean science infrastructure and expertise, to strengthen engagement in particular with citizens and rewards is very important for cooperation and to capacity, capacity building and exchange. Person is, is fundamental for the new opportunities and problems we are in the ocean. Finally, the road is long and why does the ocean science agenda cover all fields of science? And science is a uh, human endeavor, endeavor that needs to be leveraged through international cooperation. The good action is the co international cooperation in aspects of the ocean. The problem is the all. So the solution is cooperation for the all. I'm glad to see we are all united and I'm confident that resilience is in the right direction, is a good direction. To conclude, I would like to express my congratulations to all stakeholders involved in building such a fruitful cooperation over these years. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in Washington to set a new landmark in our common scientific endeavor. Thanks. Thank you, Minister, for uh, your support. Uh, and I thank all the participants that made the, this scientific forum a success. And I thank especially the youth ambassadors uh, and also uh, our co-organizer from the US. Thank you very much. And all the, the contributions from different countries that support this initiative. And uh, I would like to thank the, the partners uh, from here in Brazil uh, that made, made this organization possible. The CONFAP, and I thank uh, Dr. Odia de Lagostin, and also Elisa, thank you very much for the organization. Uh, from CNPQ, Dr. Zaira Turki and Dr. Evaldo Vilela uh, for this uh, cooperation. The employees from the, the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, they are doctors and uh, they, they are specialists and the, they, they work very hard to make this possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pinho. Uh, in your name, I thank you all the employees from the Ministry of Science and Technology. And I thank you all and the research, this research forum is closed. Thank you very much. Embaixo.